Det sa at det er så gjort Da vet du vi må inna Ikke nikk som så dum dans Hvis i det du gjorde og da Skulle ni være litt strammer I hånd se som gitt for tida Hvis så da da feil ni da Da tror de i hva da Og så sier de det du til det Du er aktan Jo da 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 Gikk det da Jo jeg ta Om så du gir seg og ta De tror de må i da Gikk det du gjør ta, du gjør ta Om så du gir seg og ta De tror de må i da Og dum da de tror sa de Inn da din sessi de Så sa da feil i da da tøy de Mat ma på så ta vi to ma gå ma gå Se da gå se de de så vi de sa De 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 So Monday, they go by the bomb, if you need up. If you talk, if you talk, more than them, they fight by the dog. Oh, yeah, if you talk, if you talk, more than them, they fight by the dog. What's going on, everybody? I hope everyone's having a fantastic evening, fantastic afternoon, fantastic pre noon, no matter where you are in the world. I'm a Sam Piker. And this is Austin Abraka is coming to you live from. Sunny California, Los Angeles, folks. We're live and alive. And I hope all the boys, girls, and enemies are having a fantastic one because today's a beautiful day. Today's a wonderful day. Today is a another 74 degree and mostly in California, Los Angeles, folks. I'm live and alive, and I hope all the boys, girls, and enemies are having a fantastic one. It is uh, is 11:13. It's Monday. It's Monday, Monday, Monday. Or not 11. Sorry. I'm so used to saying 11. It's Monday, 12, 14 p.m. And I am, of course. An hour late, and I apologize, but there's a reason for it, uh, and that reason is a good one. It's because we are shooting the fear and the calendar. That's right. We're shooting the fear and nudie calendar right now, um, and in between, I have like one last calendar shoot that I must uh, get into, and um, but before then, I was like, all right, it's time to go live and actually, you know, time to go live and make the donuts. But yeah, this is part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news, about what's going on in my life, what's going on in the universe of Hassan Hassan Ivy Piker for all my parasocialists out there in between the time period where I pressed the stop streaming button and then press the start streaming button. And that's right. We have a lot going on. Uh, I'm going to be talking about Jeremy Corbyn going on the Pierce Morgan show in a little bit. I'm going to, of course, talk about... I'm, of course, going to be talking about uh, John Oliver, obviously. Finally talking about Israel-Palestine. And... Uh, yeah, we'll we'll be giving you updates from Gaza as well. But before I get into that, before I get into that, John Oliver finally talks about it. I know you guys are gonna ask about that. I know. Okay. You wanna come say hi in this outfit? Come say hi. I'm only doing the intro. We're not doing serious news yet. Bro, come on. Bro, 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 bro. Pull it up. Pull it up. No, pull up the dude. It is so easy to get Okay. Literally a child thing. This is one of Austin's many fits. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Austin. Welcome, um, welcome. Well, yeah, this is what we're doing over here. This is what's going on in the background. I'm. Uh, he just did push-ups. I know it. Yeah, he's been, he's been, he's been lifting weights. We. He said he hasn't done push-ups for 25 minutes. You look great, though. You look very jacked. You look great. Um, is this gay Aladdin? <laughs> A little bit. Um, hold on, hold on. Israel. Um, Pierce Morgan versus Jeremy Corbyn. We'll do all that. Um, but yeah. Hassan, before you get serious, what is this? He's so fucking hot. I just want Hassan to sit in my fucking big what is, hairy. What is he? Turkish. I want his turkey. I want his turkey meat on my fucking face. Enter. What? What the fuck? I just want Hassan's fucking dick in my mouth. Enter. He's so fucking hot. I just want Hassan to sit in my fucking face with his big hairy. What is he? Turkish. I want his turkey. I want his turkey meat on my fucking face. Enter. What is that even? What was this? It was out of context. What is happening? I don't even understand what's going on there. Plus two. True though. Um, my computer keeps alerting me. It's too cold. It says I have too many windows open. Good one. All right. Um, yesterday I ended the broadcast, as you guys know, to shoot another episode, another banger episode of the fear and podcast. We did. Um, uh, and then afterwards, uh, I went to come get it. Pull those two little dials. 
Okay, pull him up. Pull it forward and then up. That is cr No, you're joking. Pull it forward. No, pull it forward. Yep, there you go. I'm proud of you. That's proud of you. That's literally a child lock. There's more. There's a t-shirt here too. Um, no, they can't. Um, but yeah, did you make, did you make cutie watch it? Yeah, we did. We made, uh, we made cutie watch it later, but it wasn't, uh, the, the meat candy video you mean, right? We made her watch it, but it wasn't as like, I mean, I guess you should find out and watch the paywall and find out. Um, you've been mentioned on Pokemon stream today. Oh, nice. Thank you. Uh, anyway, where the fuck was I? So, so yeah, we shot the podcast. Uh, I went to sleep. I woke up early, give a big old walk to Kaya, walked around, walked uh, for a couple miles, you know, uh, got a got a structured walk out of the way, and it was awesome. It was very successful, major success, and um, she's been a wonderful girl all morning, actually, as a matter of fact, because there's a lot of commotion here. There's a lot of commotion here. There's like 10 people in the house, and Kaya is the best girl. She hasn't, she has not even flinched being the best girl. She's like, this is my job. This is my duty is to be the best girl. Doing. Kai didn't pee inside today? No, she peed uh, inside when I was sleeping last night, I think. Annoying, but podcast set is ready. Podcast set is ready. However, podcast set is ready. Uh, we still don't have like the equipment that we need to put in there so we can actually film in there. So it's technically not fully ready yet. Why is she peeing so much inside while in heat? Well, um, she can't hold her piss in as much. Anyway, so you got to get that doggy door. No, it doesn't work that way. All right. Anyway, listen, listen, listen. Will it be ready by next episode? I don't know, man. Ask March. Don't ask me. He's the one who needs to put the equipment in there. All right. Um, fuck. I don't know. I'm a little tired because like I've been shooting all morning. We have some insane photos. Okay. There are insane photos. As a Jew, I just wanted to thank you for all your commentary on Israel Palestine. Because of you, I was able to actually convince my Jewish mother to be against Israel, which I could have never done before. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad that there's people listening. You know? Uh, is it really Austin's birthday? How old? He's uh, 22, I think. That's how old he is. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, some of the... This is what we're, we've are we been doing this morning. Here, if you want to get a sneak preview off of my Instagram story. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's going to go on your Instagram story. Oh, stop. Wait. <laughs> redo the same the whole thing. We're going to be live one. soon. I mean, I'm going to be dude, all day. Really? Old? Um, sure. Oh, I mean, yeah. We can, we can, tur I can turn off the, I mean, not turn it off, but like turn it up a little bit. Thought someone would say it's too cold. Um, here's Will. Well, watch out. Well, watch out. Watch out. Um, but yeah, we are, uh, as you can see, we're, we're hard at work. Okay. We're hard at work over here. Uh, uh, I'm also hard at work now. I'm being sent to the HR. Thanks. Um, yo, Hanson, I may bring Will back for 10 seconds for the girls and the boys, please. Okay. Everybody chill out. Big bald spot. Bry. What the fuck? Yeah. Big bald spot on the top of my head. Look. Fucking asshole. Good one, dude. Um, how much is Kai does Kai weigh now? I have no idea. I actually don't know. I haven't weighed her at all. I have been working non fucking stop. Non stop. So uh, there's there's so much happening in the world in the universe. So I grew up, but I can, that doesn't mean much. I can pick up a lot of weight. But um, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? What was I talking about? Wilmar got the worst people imaginable on his round table. Nice. I love that. We'll talk about all of that. Okay. Um, I have not read about in the Congo. No. We'd love to hear your take on the Britney Broski stuff. I don't know what that is. I don't know what's going on with the Britney Broski stuff. So I have no clue what you want me to know about. All right. Anyway. Um, but yeah, that's it. I digress. Let's just get fucking started. I'm I'm already annoyed. The Congo? No, I have nothing on the Congo either. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, if you're asking me about drama, I have nothing. If you're asking me about foreign policy in the Congo or Sudan, I, uh, Sudan, I have nothing. Okay. I, I don't have anything. I don't have anything for you. Okay. I have, I have, I have things. That looks awesome. No, that looks great. What are you talking about? First of all, my, my buggy smuggler, my bungee smuggler or whatever was literally smaller than that. Have you seen Noah Schnapp's niggas he's been putting up? Yeah. Um, fuck. Where was I? I was going to say this much yesterday when I did yesterday, when I did the, it was awesome. It's like, we just did like low key shit, key shit. And it, 
and I I felt happy for the first time doing a fucking broadcast, and um, we got to do a got to cycle more content and commentary that isn't like directly, like obviously I'm gonna keep up uh, with the updates on Israel and and Palestine, um, but I also um, but I also want to give in I want to cover more, uh, more variety news like American news, which is ironically lighter than that, surprisingly. I haven't done a Sunday fun day in a long time, so it was good to do. Yeah, um, but yeah, here it is. Um, let's get started. Uh, on that note, let's let's uh, let's get started. But um, did you ever cover the four LASD sheriffs offing themselves in a matter of twenty four hours? No, I I did read on it because I thought it was like a very interesting story to see if there was anything extra going on, like any extra fuckery. But it doesn't. I don't know. I don't know if there's anything. I mean, it, it just sounds very suspicious. But they haven't revealed any additional details, so I actually don't know uh, what the deal is there. But yes, I am. I have read on it. Um, I I don't know. I mean, it's like I think it was like a forensics analyst too. It wasn't like directly people. Some of, two of them were actually like sheriffs on the line. One of them was like retired, and and then one was like a forensics person. I think I don't know. Um, the tent is closed from a fire, which is crazy. That's going to traffic as well. Obviously is, and, uh, Tim Scott, um, this morning I was listening to the, uh, this morning I was listening to the New York, uh, the New York times daily. And, uh, it was a little crazy in my opinion. It was a little wild, uh, partially because <clears throat> they chose the feature. They chose to talk about doctors being. Uh, like doctors and their plight inside of Gaza, at the Al Shifa Hospital, at other hospitals in Gaza, and uh, it, like it is a very emotional, uh, it is a very emotional interview overall. Like the interviewer literally, I think, cries at a certain point, like tears up, and and they had to cut it out. Except, um, except also, um, <laughs> there was a point in the interview where they, ba where she basically was just like. What's up? What's up with Hamas? What's going on with Hamas? And like, do you guys, is Hamas stealing your fuel? And, 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 and the doctor literally was like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you're asking me about Hamas? You're asking me about politics? Like, what's wrong with you? He's like, there's literally dying children that you can hear in the background. And you're asking me about fucking Hamas. Like, what's, and to me, it's like, like, I understand the fascination that I understand why they want to know if they can uh, verify or maybe even discredit the the um, f uh, uh, talking points about how like Hamas is is planted directly underneath the hospitals and whatnot. And I get it. I think that's uh, because Israel has made this like a very big talking point. Uh, it's still not a justification, obviously. Not a justification, obviously. Regardless of whether there's tunnel structures underneath the hospital, um, regardless of whether tunnel structures exist underneath the hospital or not, it's still completely not permissible to like blow up a hospital and, and behave in the way that they've been uh, behave in the way that they have been behaving. Right? It's it's so crazy. It is utterly and entirely irrelevant. You know what I mean? You can try to square that hole as much as you want to, um, but I think there's a time and place. You know what I mean? There's a time and place. Dave Cameron just got appointed Home Secretary. It's wild. Imagine if Obama got appointed in the U.S. Yeah. Why are young people so pro-Palestine? That's such a funny uh, the thing to ask like, as a question. It's like a question, but they're, I feel like they're like, we have to fix that. Huh. Um, sorry, just getting here. What are we doing to whose hole? What? I know. New Jal Oliver dropped on the, on the, the war, on the conflict. Anyway, let's get started. Um. First and foremost, World Health Organization says Gaza's main hospital is no longer functioning. About Let's the get started state there. Of hospitals in Joe's hospitals in the Gaza Strip. The UN says 20 out of 36 are no longer working. The biggest Al Shifa is not functioning at all, according to the World Health Organization. Al Shifa's head of surgery has told the BBC that a third premature newborn baby has died because of a lack of power. There are reports that Gaza's second biggest hospital, Al Quds, has run out of fuel. It's now five weeks since Hamas designated a terror organization, a terror organization by the UK government, killed more than 1,200 people in Israel and took more than 200 hostage. 
Since then, Hamas officials say well over 11,000 people have been killed in Israeli attacks. That's a crazy way to fucking cover that. Jesus Christ. Hamas officials say. Might as well just not even say how many people died at that point. You know what I mean? It's very interesting that, like, they full-blown just do this, like, they full-blown do this thing where it's like, one, Hamas is a designated terror group, which it is. And two, its civil governance branch, like the health ministry, is actually also Hamas, which it is. But packaging it in this way, which they didn't used to, by the way, which they did not used to, packaging in this way is deliberate. I've talked about this quite a bit. Um, it's specifically done to discredit the numbers. And that's what's going on. On Gaza. Well, let's go live to Jerusalem now and speak to our correspondent, Tom Bateman. Good morning, Tom. Another week begins. Just talk us through what's been happening overnight. What we have is this really desperate situation at Ash Shifa Hospital. You were hearing about the World Health Organization talking about a perilous and dire. It's because of the fact that around the hospital now, now there is very fierce fighting. They're talking about intense bombardment and armed clashes. And so within the hospital, on top of what has been... You know, you know, a very, very, uh, an extremely difficult humanitarian situation for weeks now. It is effectively completely closed, apart from what the Israelis say are safe evacu evacuation routes out. Now, Palestinians say that it is simply not safe. There are dead bodies lining the route that people have been, route, that people have been shot at uh, and people killed when they um, have tried to, to leave. So it's extremely perilous. And in the middle of all this, this huge crisis with 36 now premature babies taken out of the intensive neonatal intensive care unit because it stopped functioning because of the loss of power, uh, now being kept in a uh, cardiac surgery room without the right equipment. They're not in incubators. They can't be kept properly warm. They have desperate needs. And the doctor there, Dr. Marwan Abu Sada, telling the BBC that he fears those babies will die unless either the hospital gets fuel to power incubators or like i know that i know that uh in 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 every way like israel tries to justify uh, all of these uh, ruthless uh, killings i mean it's basically just all out slaughter ethnic cleansing and ethnic displacement being the main goal here the main objective if you listen to the israeli officials they'll very clearly define that very clearly openly state that I, I i just i feel like it is is like the the slaughter and the death and destruction have have gotten to a point where it's like it's a baby in an incubator like these are premature babies that have to survive inside of an incubator it's like i know that uh the israeli president can go and be like we found this book about how this annotated book in a child's library about Hitler and how this kid, how this indicates that even children are technically culpable or whatever, and and children are Hamas. Like when you talk about a baby in an incubator, it's like objectively, it, it it's literally the the equivalent of like burning down an orphanage. You know what I mean? Children who uh, these are these are babies who haven't even like babies who haven't even like fully developed. You know, and. Um, I don't know. There's like, it's almost comical when you think about it. it's, it's literally, it's, I don't know. You can't even, you can't, there's no justification. There's no justification for any of this, obviously, but it, like you can make propaganda, I guess, for, uh, for, for the freaks that desperately want the freaks that desperately want to, to, I guess, cut propaganda to make this seem like it's totally permissible and totally valid and totally legal but it's just i don't know i, I mean there's nothing there's nothing i can say at this point like i know soft zionists like liberals want to maintain this this uh defense of israel's actions and that's what like what that's what western media is kind of doing uh it's like giving them an out but there's no way to i don't know there's just simply no way to talk about this um there's there's no way to talk about what's going on and 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 try to defend <sighs> msf press release doctors Without borders press release says snipers are targeting patients at el shifa hospital in gaza one of their surgeons is quoted in front of the main gate there are many bodies there are also injured patients we can't bring them inside there's also a inside the hospital and the doctors and doctors Without borders doctors or like british palestinian uh, international doctors in general are uh, are all collectively saying that this is an atrocity. Uh, if you look to the 
the New York Times Daily Podcast, where they talk about fuel and, and how it's been under blockade pretty much, not much, nonstop. It's basically, it is, it, it's a cemetery. That's what the doctor is saying. Um, and, and looking at all of this and not having like immediate sheer visceral disgust i don't know i don't know how you can look at a situation like this and go yeah i think this is probably valid normal justifiable like it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if the hamas headquarters are fucking underneath the hospital like you can't this is unimaginable it's just i don't know i don't know what else to say there's one side that routinely and and still continuously lies about pretty much every action that they've taken and tried to make really silly justifications for. And then all of the victims, when asked, all of the people when asked say, hey, just stop bombing us. You know what I mean? Like, please, please stop bombing us. Like, we, don't, we don't know if there is Hamas or not, but just like, please, can you stop bombing us? Or even other doctors who say, no, I've worked there for years. I did not see any Hamas underneath the hospital. But the fact that, the fact that there is no, no empathy here uh, for Palestinians it says it all, right? I mean, it's just... But... Vended by viewers like you. Please support our work. I'm coll- all right, here. Gaza's health system, as Gaza's health system collapses under relentless Israeli bombardment and blockades. Saturday, Al Shifa Hospital. They've shut off. They've shut off the the lights in like the hallways and stuff. At this point, they have like very very limited fuel. And out of fuel, forcing doctors to remove dozens of premature babies from incubators. Six preemies have already. Died. Doctors are struggling to keep more than thirty other babies. Palestinian health officials have accused Israel of using snipers to shoot at people inside the hospital complex where thousands of displaced Palestinians have sought refuge. Israel's claimed Hamas runs a command center below the hospital. Hamas and medical officials at the hospital have denied the claim. On Sunday, Dr. Mohammed Obeid, a border. surgeon uh, with Doctors Without censored. Borders, described the dire situation inside the hospital. Situation. Wait, what the fuck is going on with this? Some bodies are in the call for, and also there's a sniper attack for patients from the inside the hospital. One of them has shot directly in his neck, and we have a quadriplegia. I agree with your opinions on the situation, but I don't get why Hamas is fighting the IDF near the hospital. It looks very bad, and even if they have a base there, they cannot realistically... I don't know if you understand this, but, like, they're being invaded, and children are being sniped, and fucking, uh, you know, people are getting sniped inside of a hospital. At that point... It's ridiculous that you're still talking about optics. What about the optics of fucking literally mercilessly, ruthlessly bombing a fucking hospital and its courtyard and shooting at the people there? Like, this is a question to ask. Like, wow, what about the optics of Hamas? What are you, what are you fucking talking about? What are you fuck about? Like, from, their, their, from the position of the Palestinians, they are the ones who are trying to fucking push back against an invading force. You understand that, right? Like, I, I don't know how else to, to cover this situation. I, I don't know what to say. Like, ask Palestinians how they feel. There's a reason why every single fucking... Uh, there's 2.2 million Palestinians in the Gaza Strip, and Israel can't find a single fucking Palestinian to be like, Hamas is bad, so they have to make up shit. You know what I mean? I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are uh, Palestinians out there who are like, yeah, uh, we hate Hamas. Except right now, you know why they're not fucking speaking? You know why they're not fucking speaking? I don't give a shit about making the IDF propaganda seem true, dumbass. Okay? Do you not understand self-defense at this point? Do you want to know why when I said when Russia invaded Ukraine on the Eastern Front, they completely eviscerated any kind of goodwill they could have ever had historically from the likes of uh, those who live in Kharkiv who identify uh, uh, like with being Russian or watch Russian television, whatever the fuck. They completely lost all of that because they bombed the shit out of those positions. They bombed the shit out of civilians. It's impossible at that point to, to feel confident about uh, these people liberating you. Just think about it like a human being. Please, being bombed by an invading force is going to cause you to literally fucking go, you know what? These guys that are bombing me are actually liberating me. That's why they killed my uncle. That's why they destroyed my home. That's why they destroyed the, the beachfront. Talking about the optics of like being fucking blown to bits, 
and you're not at the actual optics of like what Israel has done and what Israel, like what Israel has done and what Israel continues to do with the go ahead of the entirety of the Western world. And you turn around and you go, why is the militia force that's like fighting back, fighting back against the bombing occupation is insane to me. I, I genuinely don't understand. Like I've said, while there's no proof whatsoever other than Israel claiming for years, by the way, it's always been like a like a rumor that that, you know, there's a Hamas headquarters under the hospital. Even if there was a Hamas headquarters under the hospital, you still cannot blow up the hospital. You cannot blow up the people inside of the hospital. You cannot shoot people inside of the hospital. This is insane. For those of you who also don't know, let me explain it further to you. Let's say there's a Hamas military. Let's say there's a Hamas militant who's shooting, okay, who's shooting, uh, Israeli soldiers okay, inside of Gaza. First of all, that's technically a militia, and that is legally allowed by international law. That's number one. doesn't matter if you consider them terrorists. It's, that's the most valid thing that you can do, regardless of whether they're terrorists or not. So that's number one. Number two, when that person is shot, let's say a Hamas militant is shot, and someone takes out a stretcher, and carries that person into the hospital, you cannot follow that person into the hospital and kill them, okay? There are rules to not morally permissible or just to shoot someone on a fucking stretcher. You cannot do that. That is not allowed, okay? Even if there are militants who are literally like, I love Hamas and I hate Israel, you cannot fucking shoot people on a stretcher. You cannot shoot people in a hospital. There are rules to this. Shooting medics is a war crime. It's, of course, also... Israeli policy when you think about it really I didn't know they were firing RPGs from stretchers no I'm not talking about the fucking one video of the dude uh, running around with an RPG it doesn't matter this is complete the premature babies that are dying as a consequence of not having enough fuel in the hospital are not the Hamas militants okay. if anything all of this show is that this is something hold on one second I'm talking to Twitch right now as well for something Anyway, um, they've been saying all about their opposition. According to the idea of Hezbollah, also used schools and hospitals for munitions stored. Do you know that why the focus is on the Al Shifa hospital? Right now, Al Shifa and the Al Quds hospitals are the two major areas with the highest civilian uh, density. Like everyone that is remaining in northern Gaza, everyone that is remaining in northern Gaza is basically there right now. Okay, every single person from like the the Interior Ministry. Okay, all the way to all of the civilians and all the doctors. That's it. Hasn't been able to leave northern Gaza. Are are taking refuge in these two major areas. That's on. So taking over Al, Al Shifa and taking over the uh, Martyrs Hospital is is completely taking over the entirety of the uh, the the. The remaining life on, on Gaza, the, the Gaza Strip, and the northern Gaza, the, the Gaza Strip, and the northern Gaza. Idea of bullshit is northern Gaza is devoid of people now. I mean, obviously, there's like still half a million plus people inside of Gaza. I'm saying that, but the largest population density and all the people remaining in Gaza are in those two hospital areas in the surrounding area. There's people in the north still, but you have to realize that the major population centers remaining are. are why are you saying civilian building? Once you have weapons and you use a building as a base to launch rockets, it's no longer a civilian building. International law says they can attack that building in Hamas. That, that is a war crime. That is the human shield. I need you to understand something. Okay. I need you to understand something very important. First and foremost, I'm trying my very best. The notion that people are actually, like, <laughs> you're trying to justify bombing a hospital. I don't know what to tell you. I literally don't know what to tell you. I, I, I don't know how to. Talk about how this is not appropriate at all. Okay. A police officer carrying a gun doesn't make an entire school a valid target. I've talked about this quite a bit. If there was a school happening, okay, if there's an active shooting, you don't fucking new entire block that the school is on and kill all the children in the school and kill all the children in the hospital next to the school and kill all the children uh, and, and their family members on that block. That is not how this, that is never how this works. So the only reason why you think it would work in this circumstance, the only reason why you think it would work in this circumstance is, be, is because you think that all of the victims inside of this hospital, civilian, the overwhelming majority, if not every single one, obviously not every single person is going to be a civilian. Some of them are going to be enemy combatants as well. 
You can't... This is not like a valid target. You can't justify that unless you are an absolute fucking sociopathic monster. The expectation that like Palestinians across the board have to be perfect victims, otherwise is perfectly morally permissible to like destroy them and kill them, is a psychotic. Libbed up chatters on ironically arguing that the Russians, uh, what the Russians did during the Beslan school siege is totally okay. Beslan school siege, also referred to the Beslan school hostage crisis or the Beslan massacre, was a terrorist attack that started on the first of September 2004 that lasted three days involved the imprisonment of more than 1,100 people as hostages including 777 children and ended with the deaths of 333 people 186 of them children as well as 31 of the attackers it is considered to be the deadliest school shooting in history they're doing the U.S. strategy in Iraq where all they put the media focus on the Baghdad airport once they took over the airport they managed to take over the country within three days as the resistance thought it's over I think that's why the focus is on al-Shifa I mean it is the major it is like the major uh, point of life in the northern military target. There are certain parameters that must be met, such as key military infrastructure, entry control points, munitions, military personnel, outnumbering civilians. Just because Hamas may or may not be using the hospital doesn't mean it's a Hamas stronghold. Under no circumstance can you legally bomb a hospital. Yes. The Department memo accuses Biden of spreading misinformation about Israeli war crimes. This is wild. At least 100. Uh, administration employees are accusing Biden of spreading misinformation about Palestine now. An internal State Department dissent memo accuses President Biden of spreading misinformation on the Israel-Hamas war and alleges that Israel is committing war crimes in Gaza according to a copy of the memo obtained by Axia. It's, I don't know. It's just, I, I feel disgusting. Like, I want to fucking throw, especially because people just want to so desperately justify what's happening. What is this? More than a month into the war on Gaza, we're starting with the coverage in the U.S. Freedom of expression. We'll talk about that in a second. All right, let's just finish this. The aftermath. Some of the people which actually go outside the hospital, they want to go to the south, they bump them also. They bump the family from the city hospital today in the morning. There is no electricity. That was Dr. Mohammed Obeid, a surgeon with MSF, Doctors Without Borders, inside the Al-Shifa hospital. On Sunday, Democracy Now! reached another doctor in Gaza City, Dr. Fadel. Uh, we are we at Al-Ahli Arab Hospital, the Baptist Hospital, are the only functioning hospital in the Gaza City. All the injured people and... Uh... What's with all the Trump 2024 PSYOP propaganda in this community all of a sudden? What are you talking about? Who the fuck is saying Trump PSYOP propaganda? Have you seen the insane amount of Hassan Abi heads, heads advocating for voting against Joe Biden? That's your major point of contention here? That's what you care about? Are you fucking insane? What's wrong with your brain, dude? Really rewire yourself, please. And chatters, don't fucking yell at this person, please, okay? I hate when, I hate when people do this sh When I pull someone up, let me yell at them. You don't have to do that. Okay? I think that, as I've said already... When, especially as the election is a year out, trying to extract concessions from your elected leaders is morally just and very good and at the basis of the democratic process. If the goal is to constantly say, well, the other side is much worse, which is objectively true. Donald Trump would be worse than Joe Biden, except Joe Biden is currently continuing Donald Trump, Donald Trump's is and, and doing it vocif with vociferous support. Um Ultimately, you have to try to get your side to do the things that you think are correct and right. If, if, you, if, you, if you don't fucking do the process, what's the reason? What's the, what's the entire reason for, for voting for a politician? This doesn't make any sense. This does not make any sense whatsoever. I don't understand if the job, if the goal isn't to try to get your politicians to get the people that you're voting for to like do your bidding when there is like popular support for a particular thing, then why are you even voting? I genuinely don't understand it. I, I also put pressure on another candidate to primary Biden since he's objectively a bad candidate. I mean, he is, and and that is uh, there is a time to talk about that, but like. I don't understand. I, I really don't understand. Like, these are the people that said, we're going to push Joe Biden left, just vote him. It, it's just team sports at this point, and you just want your fucking politician, you, you want your team to win for no reason other than to say you're team. I'm sorry. Like, what could Joe Biden do? As long as Trump is worse than if Joe Biden is, let's say, as bad as Donald Trump was last time around, is that our... Is that our should we not... Should we not try to... 
to change Joe Biden's uh, uh, policies. Why should we not do that? And trying to extract consensus by saying you're not going to vote for them is actually a very important and very good thing to do. This. This is not about like this isn't this isn't about this is not about like being a leftist or a Marxist or or loving Trump or loving Joe Biden at all. Completely, completely outside of that. This is just if you're a good Democratic Party supporter, let's say you really, really want socialized medicine. You're a liberal, you love liberalism, you are a social democrat, and you really want socialized medicine. It has happened in other countries, you want it in the United States of America. Should you just shut the f all the time? Let's say there's enough momentum that it could possibly, okay? Stopping Israel from engaging in an ethnic cleansing campaign so much easier than implementing a socialized healthcare structure. But even then, okay, even in that situation, like, should you just not demand it? Should you not make demands of the person that you're voting for? This idea is not just liberalism. The idea that you cannot ask your politicians, you cannot make demands out of your politicians, is not liberalism. It's something different. It's entirely different. It's just like teams. Like, it, it's a deliberate confession. You don't care about any of the policies. You just want your guy. The entire principle behind the democratic process. Why is there a democracy at all then? You see it all. And I think it's because a lot of people don't care. A lot of people don't care about what's going on in Palestine. Let's be fucking real. But they don't want to say that because they're like progressive liberals. They have... Uh, they have claimed that they're progressive liberals, and they don't really give a shit that like Palestinian children are being ruthlessly slaughtered in 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 Gaza. So instead of openly admit, so instead of openly admitting that, which they don't want to, because then they would lose their liberal credentials, like right? They just simply it's really messed up that you're making this a red line. Ethnic cleansing is a red line for you. It's kind of just say it. Just say you don't really care about it that much because there is no other argument against like being a year out from the election and and standing against all of these people making a completely morally just and righteous it's perfectly reasonable the idea, the idea that this is ridiculous and you shouldn't ask for this because the other side is worse is at the heart of how we have uh created a process in which even when joe biden is the over over so many years and so many election cycles we have moved, we've ratcheted towards right-wing politics in this country, and we are creeping towards actual full-blown fascism in many ways. And there's nothing we can do about it. There's like, there's no way to, the lesser evil, uh, the lesser evil is, is just a way to tell everyone to just shut the fuck up. Don't make any demands. Don't make any demands what's like party candidates are entitled to your votes. Is exactly, uh, is, is exactly how we put up Hillary Clinton. It's exactly how we put up Joe Biden. It's exactly how the DNC got away with doing whatever the fuck it wanted to do over and over again. And Joe Biden was objectively going to be a horrible, horrible second term, no matter what, because he's old. And we knew this. We knew this from years ago. We knew this four years ago. He was too old four years ago. Four years ago, he was too old four years but, of course, everybody promoted Joe Biden as the guy, the only guy who can beat Donald Trump. And now we have to deal the idea that the idea that, that we can't make any concess we can't even get any concessions out the the Democrats that we vote means that you don't care about democracy at all. You care about like certain aspects. For the most part, I think you care about, you know, the Democratic Party being in power. It's but you don't necessarily care if they do anything, really, as long as it's not the reality. There is valid, there are valid concerns about Republicans gaining, prime. but what you fail to recognize that, you know, without the Democrats doing something to fight back against them, you might as well be just slowing down the Republican. Huh? Uh, Let's get back to this. Uh, people like uh, people with hypertension or diabetes mitis or diarrhea or uh, asthma or children with uh, dehydration, uh, cancer patients with who need dialysis, uh, uh, and uh, are coming to our hospital because they have no other 
possibility to go to other hospitals. The other hospitals are surrounded by the Israeli tankers, like the biggest hospital in Gaza, Shifa Hospital, uh, and Nasser Pediatric Hospital, uh, and Nasser Pediatric Hospital. Uh, some of the uh, NGO hospitals are closed because uh, of the uh, <coughs> shortage in foil and uh, equipment. Uh, since yesterday, we received more than 300 to 400 uh, injured people and uh, tens of uh, other uh, people who had other uh, health problems. Uh, we uh, had to do some uh, surgical interventions in the corridors uh, and on the court uh, because of the shortage of uh, anesthesia. Uh, our biggest problem is the uh, shortage in manpower because we are a small hospital. We are not prepared to receive such uh, like these numbers of patients at one. Many volunteers came to help us, but we need specialized doctors in different specialties, uh, in general surgery, in neurosurgery, chest surgery, vascular surgery, and gynecology, in uh, pediatric, uh, pediat pediatric. Uh, unfortunately, these patients, some of them uh, died uh, because we couldn't do, uh, we couldn't do anything for them. That was Dr. Fad speaking Sunday from Al-Ahli Al-Arabi Hospital in Gaza City. To talk more about the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, we're joined by Dr. Tanya Haj Hassan. She's a pediatric intensive care physician who works with the humanitarian aid organization, who works with the humanitarian aid organization Médecins Sans Frontières, MSF, or Doctors Without Borders. She's in regular contact with health professionals in Gaza and previously worked as a medical trainer in Gaza and the West Bank. She's the co-founder of the social media account Gaza Medic Voices, which shares firsthand accounts from healthcare professionals in Gaza. On Saturday, she took part in a vigil outside British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's office. She broke down while reading an urgent message from the director of Al Shifa Hospital in Gaza, Dr. Nidal Had. Survive until the. Dr. Haj Hassan breaks down as she tries to read a state from the doc. In they're trying to be they're like the thing is everyone tries to go well what about hamas what about hamas and the reason why people do that is because like they they want to make it morally permissible to kill all of these people like these doctors the children because hamas and okay i don't care i don't care if hamas is there okay i don't this is ridiculous this is completely ridiculous that, you know, there's just, there's Hamas there, okay? And that's why we have to do this. No, there has to be lines, and there are red lines. I don't understand. They didn't even try to prove Hamas is there. They do. They do try to prove it. They try to prove it by, they had fake, they put up a fake doctor. Okay, here's a couple of different things. There's always been, this is always the system. Okay, there's always been this uh, rumor. It's been around for a very long time that the El Shifa hospital like, uh, is, is on top of like the Hamas headquarters. This is always, okay? The doctors that have worked there, international doctors, have said that, that there is no such situation there. I believe them. Why wouldn't I believe them? Why would I believe the, the, the Israeli rumor? It could be true, but it doesn't change the reality that like there is no genuine evidence to show that, and all the evidence actually shows the exact... So the question is... All of these people that uh, all these people have to be in on it, uh, and the idea of tried to show that there was a tunnel under the hospital. Uh, it was very badly edited. Yeah, they put up they put up a fake doctor. Um, but the world has to know. They put up a fake doctor who's like holding a fucking stethoscope, like uh, literally to be like, oh, I'm a real doctor. Like, look at me. I can't believe I'm doing. But the world has to know. Has to know. Fake explosion noises. They're taking over the fuel, the medicine. I have nothing to treat. 
for a five year old boy. It's just, it's so in. This is what we have here. This is this is the evidence. This is what we have here. Like this is this is the evidence. The evidence is like fake doctors. Okay, fake doctors being like, please uh, come in and blow up hospital. This is the only way. This is the only way uh, that we can get rid of Hamas. Please, Hamas, please blow up the hospital in Gaza. Hamas is there. Okay, and like holding her fucking uh, perfectly clean outfit, holding a stethoscope. They should be like, I'm a doctor. Uh, fake bomb sounds, no fucking additional... Uh, no, no additional noise in the background. You've heard the doctors give interviews. Okay. You've heard the doctors give interviews from inside the hospital this past week. Does it sound? Yeah. Yes. It's Palestine. That is a pally with situation going on. Exactly. Every fucking, every accusation is a confession. Okay. They say Palestinians, they say Palestinians are lying about all of the bombing and, and all of the, the little babies that, uh, Israel is killed. They're actually doing makeup and it's fake, which is an insane thing to say. Meanwhile, they're making this shit up in order to like justify bombing the. It's completely ridiculous. Please, please, if you, if you hear me away, don't stay here, please. Ya alam, ya nas, Anyway, so she's so obviously it's really is funny. Her Israeli accent is extremely obvious. Yeah, it's just, I don't even give a shit about the end. Like, it's it's very clearly fucking fake. No. Okay? I And none of the doctors that are at El Shifa have ever seen this woman. Okay? Here it is. Uh, I can report that three doctors of MSF staff currently... Uh, I can report that three doctors without borders MSF staff currently at the Shifa, El Shifa hospital said today that they've never seen this woman in this apparent fake video, which has been viewed 12 million times before being deleted from an Israeli account. Uh, this closely echoes the 2011 hoax. In 2011, Israel government shared a YouTube video by a man who claimed to be an Israeli gay rights activist who said he was discriminated against by Gaza flotilla organizers. The video was exposed as a hoax. John Ronson Everyone set now. out to find the actor in it. John Ronson, my goat. The mystery I'm out there, an experience I went through recently. The, the Gaza flotilla is the one with uh, Mavi Marmara. Remember when I told you guys, like the Turkish humanitarian aid? In the fight for gay rights. For years. It was hurtful. And even a little heartbreaking. I've been active in the gay rights movement since college. I heard a lot of stories about flotillas and convoys from Europe trying to reach the gun. The names of the group sounded impressive. Viva Palestina, Free Gaza Movement, IHH Humanitarian Relief. I thought this is something I want to do. So I decided. He said the IHH human. This is Turkish, by the way. I think he might be Turkish as well. His accent sounds like he could be Turkish. But he's talking about how, like, these are humanitarian aids mission, but it's like an Islamist out as well. But I won't get into the details of that. They're, you know, that's a that's a long, convoluted process. But they also literally uh, did the the humanitarian flotilla um, that pushed through the Israeli blockade from sea, and then the Israeli commandos dropped in from fucking attack helicopters and mercilessly slaughtered a bunch of the uh, the humanitarian aid workers, and then tried to try to turn around and go. Oh, I had to try to turn around and go, oh, remember, uh, well, these guys are actually terrorists. Like, look at all the weapons they had on the ship. And the weapons were just like, no. like, they couldn't even find anything. So they were just like, look at all the weapons we have on the ship. I've talked about this quite a bit. It's the Mavima situation. I think this guy. I tried to contact one of these groups based off London. I sent an email. I explained that I lead a network of gay rights activists and that we'd love to bring some product. After about a month, I get a short email from the London group saying that the participation of my LGBT network would not be possible since it would not be in the overall interest of the villa. I was surprised. Look at this fucking fedora. Nice. And I've been said, who are these people? Unlike most homemade YouTube videos, there seemed to be a second unit getting B-roll of Mark Pax in the corner of the room and following him down the street. So I decided to check his story out with the Free Gaza movement in London. We're the only ones with a, in the flotilla with a in London. So it would have had to have been yeah. you? If he's contacted London, then he's, he would have come back. And you can't have an email from nope. No, and I, I had checked all the Free Gaza email accounts. He hasn't, he hasn't contacted us. Yeah, I mean, also, if he had actually contacted, unironically, the IH, 
e he he, they probably would have been like, yeah, fuck off. But let's be real, because derivative, uh, very Muslim, uh, I mean, very fundamentalist, uh, uh, Islamist, conservative outlet, I mean, outfit. Uh, that's what it is. So he just like uh, approached the wrong guys. Anyway, the actor refused to say who made the video. But as I reported at the time, it was boosted by David Saranga, an Israeli diplomat who tossed students to promote Israel online with guerrilla marketing. As Mark Owen Jones' response video supposedly recorded in the Gaza hospital this week was shared by an official Israeli government account for communicating with Arabic speakers. This week was shared by an official Israeli government account for communicating with Arabic speakers before being deleted amid widespread suspicion it was fake. And they deleted it. Um, they deleted the video because it was fake. They've been doing this non stop Other ways that they've tried to justify it is by making these like, uh, we yes, like CGI and um, CGI animated uh, videos claiming that there are massive hospital uh, tunnel networks under the hospital. There's evidence. <sighs> there are, uh, yeah, there's animated, uh, animated videos just fine that there's tunnels underneath. Bro, you filled it up. Stuffed it a little bit, it seems. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I followed it, unlike you and Will. Yeah, I, I freeballed it. I didn't, ha I didn't, I didn't, anyway, I, I can't talk about this right now. This is so serious and, and I'm being so unserious. Um, thank you, Rob. They just dropped, uh, tunnels, uh, into the hospital. Uh, here, this is, I guess this is exclusive raw footage. Watch idea of spokesperson, rear admiral Daniel Hagari walked through one of the Hamas subterranean terrorist tunnels only to exit in Gaza's Rantizi hospital on the other side inside these tunnels. Terrorists. Hamas terrorist this hides operate and hold Israeli hostages one against their the will. the senior terrorist who is the head of the operation. It notice, of the it notice how this is in English. Remember, the reason why this is in English is because they want, this is for the Western uh, media. ...naval operations that led the raids into Israel. His house is right next to a school. His house is 200 yards from the hospital, the hospital of Antissi. Next to his house, there is... I saw this list of everything the Israeli official account of uh, posted in... Now I want to show you an operational tunnel. The tunnel is built with electricity. We first saw the solar panels, then the electricity goes here and it goes down directly to the tunnel. Now you can see, you can see now, the tunnel is let down more than 20 meters down. The robot found a door, a door. No, they are in Gaza and they do have tunnels. Chat, okay, this is a, this is a byproduct of like, unironically lying about everything and Israel does this so much that like people immediately go oh this must be fake no of course there are fucking tunnels I've literally never said that there aren't tunnels of course I've literally time and time again repeated that there are plenty of tunnels underneath Gaza the entire the entire uh, strip has uh, certain populated areas where there's a complicated tunnel network underneath it that is correct okay bulletproof it's, it's explosive proof so it's I Looks don't know like if this is actually a service hatch or literally a fucking Hamas tunnel, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the, the idea that, like, uh, there are tunnels under most cities, I know. Everybody knows that there are systems underneath Gaza, underneath the Gaza Strip, 400 kilometers worth that we know of, okay? That part is kilometers worth that we know of, okay? That part is true. That part is real. That's where most of the hostages like a hard evidence, a clear evidence that the hospital direction is said this is a core tunnel. It's part of the same floor and it slides here. So it's a cover tunnel so nobody can find it. This is Rantisi and this is the place where I show you the tunnel. I want this is the back side of the hospital. Hamas used this hospital. Tonight we have entered into this building. I will show you the evidence. Let's enter into the hospital. We're now entering into the area. Why is he bleeding? Of the hospital where we had the, Did he get found hit? the evidence. Uh, this operation was conducted by uh, Israeli special unit, <laughs> the Israeli Navy SEALs. Did he fall in the tunnel? Did he bump his head in the tunnel? What's going on? It's still dude? an operation that he's conducting. And I'm showing you the first evidence to see. I like the raw footage that's like heavily edited. Anyway, I want to show the room where we found all the gear, the operational gear of Hamas. Hamas is using. They say the tunnels are explosion proof, so why are they bombing? Well, I'll tell you why they're bombing. The real reason why they're bombing is because they want to kill everyone indiscriminately on top of the tunnel networks 
because they don't want a single perspective. It's totally valid to kill as many people as possible. There's a secondary or maybe even a primary reason, the primary reason being ethnic cleansing and ethnic displacement. But ultimately, even on the even from the most like, uh, uh, let me defend Israel uh, point of view, okay? Even from the most like liberal uh, analysis of the situation, they are doing it specifically because they they can get away with bombing indiscriminately, and and then go into the tunnel network, and and then go into the tunnel network and actually blow it up because you can't blow up these tunnels with uh, with missiles for the most part. They're ten, they are ten meters, uh, uh, they're dug in ten meters deep into the ground. So what they have to do is basically go find the entrance of the tunnel network and drop bombs inside of the tunnel network. Sometimes they go directly into the tunnel networks and the tunnel networks are wrapped. So they die inside of the tunnel networks. The reason why they have to, they, they literally have to clear out the area around it, to clear out the area on top of it. Now, obviously there's a better way to do this. This is part of the reason why you have to. I mean, even bunker busters, chat, even bunker busters, you have to remember like 10 meters underground. It is very deep. If there's all, if there's one thing that can fucking stop uh, shelling, it's it's a it's a it's just the ground. The ground is very powerful at fucking stop explosions. Ten meters is thirty three feet. The point is the reason why, even from like the most, uh, you know, even if I were to be as charitable as humanly possible, which is inhumane in this circumstance, the reason why they blow up everything, the reason why they want to actually, they don't actually want to do a precise. Um, they don't want to do any striking, any kind of like military operations because they don't want to fucking have any of the IDF soldiers die because the life of an IDF soldier in the minds of the IDF is far greater than a thousand fucking Palestinian children. That's it. 65 feet under work. Yeah. The Gaza Strip is a harrowing shaft tunnel net. The Gaza Strip is a harrowing pitfall soldiers have learned to expect from urban warfare. This is, this is how this works. That's why, that's why they're doing it. That's why they're, they don't give a shit. They don't give a shit about who the fuck they're killing. And because Gaza is also very densely slammed, densely packed, they can, um, you know, they can just claim like, well, a rocket came from this area. They work with really shitty intelligence half the time as well. And then, uh, you know, blow up an entire uh, four-story building that had a pizza restaurant in it that had real human beings hiding in it. And then claim that this was a high priority target that they blew up to justify it after the fact. And it's always bad intel. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's bad or not. Because nobody gives a shit about Palestinians. That's the point I make. When you don't give a shit about the Palestinian lives, you are way, uh, way readier to accept that uh, this is perfectly valid and perfectly legal and perfectly just as a military operation. We've, we've looked at the tunnels uh, ourselves, yes. Inside the Hamas terror tunnels, the Israel bombing. Um, we, we covered it before. We had, uh, I think it was Hind Hassan, right? That went down into the tunnels. Yes. Hospitals, like we showed the evidence in Shifa Hospital, in other hospitals. Like he says, we showed the evidence in Shifa Hospital. They haven't. They A operation still conducting right now. Look What's your suggestion to fight Hamas then? That's a great question. You cannot fight Hamas. You have to fight it politically. You have to eviscerate you have to eviscerate hamas's political power that's it it's a political problem because the reality is just like you can't fight the taliban just like you can't fight any of these other fucking uh like formations of civil governance you have to you can just do what you did in afghanistan you can just do what you did in afghanistan bomb it mercilessly have the taliban grow in its uh ranks and, and then you know fuck off and, and leave the country to them after you're done blowing the shit uh, uh, country. You can't do that. There's no way. There's no way to, to engage with them in this way. My counter has been, what is your suggestion to fight? Like, this is a political. This is not a military problem. You cannot solve this militarily. That is precisely the reason why every single incursion into, every single incursion into Gaza has led no meaningful uh, crippling of, of Hamas at all. Because... There are always going to be more people that want to survive, that want to live free, that want to be rid of the occupation. And the more you kill their parents, the more justified they feel about it. Look at what Hamas is holding inside. I want you to understand. 
like this is so funny it, th this always strikes me ironically like uh this literally feels like uh it feels like the nypd caught like the big drug ring bust right and then they have like one fucking diag or something it always feels so funny no they place they, of course they put it in the same area so they can film it chat they gather it all into an area but what you have to rules and the grenades this is like an average american compound okay that this is not like a this is not a serious valid military target they're trying to make this come across like as a serious valid military target by pu putting all these fucking uh putting all these weapons in one area to be like look look at how look at what we've extracted here it's ridiculous <laughs> average american car valid military target huh yeah, drug bus photos with like six cell phones and thirty-eight dollars in ones and like eight dime bags. You know what I mean? To be like, look, we we busted up the worst operation we've ever found. And it's like, do you think being two hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of munitions into this fucking vicinity, just in this specific area, and then like deploying uh multiple brigades is is justifiable for what you have extracted here? Do you think that even from a even from a uh, uh, standpoint of, like, economy, does this make sense? To no, you haven't missed me cover John Oliver yet. We this is a gear for a life. These are... Ex <laughs> These are... Like, come on, dude. Come on. You literally have, like, more shit on you <laughs> than what you're pointing vest, to. <laughs> vest with explosives. Yeah? It's a vest for terrorists to explode forces among people. Among patients, we have hand grenades, Kalikovs, and then we have the RPGs. People shooting RPGs. They haven't been able to find one guy. They, there's only evidence so far that, that the IDF has been able to show is like one guy with an RPG running in the vicinity of a hospital. I've seen that video. That's, that's pretty much it. None of which justifies blowing up every hospital fucking strip, but it's crazy. How come there's no rocket launcher with RPGs as a fake? Probably fucking uh, ran away. Like they, they, when they blew up this area, uh, the, the operatives probably fuck when they blew up this area, uh, the, the operatives probably fucking ran away. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm going to run the three minute ad break here, by the way, before I forget, because I am forgetting. Okay. This is Hamas firing RPGs for hospitals. I hate this. The world I don't, I'm probably not going to watch to understand this. who is Israel fighting against. We are now in, and in this basement, we found a motorcycle. They were used in the massacre of the of October. Even have in this. So they back from the massacre on the 7th of October into Rantisi Hospital with hostages nice. on a motorcycle. We're still young here. We find a chair, a woman, a rope next. The fuck it? We're still researching this, whatever. It's a baby. A woman, a rope next to the legs. Great example. Um, so how do you deal with that? By blowing it up, really? Like you're saying that guys are, these guys put the hostages there and your, your fucking goal here is to what? Like blow up the hospital so the Israeli uh, victims die as well? Like what the fuck? And look up, it's a baby bottle. It's a baby bottle in a basement above a World Health Organization sign. This is a suspicion for area where houses were being held. We're now looking at an infrastructure. You don't need to build. We're now looking at an infrastructure. You don't need to build something improvisedly in a hospital in the basement, unless you want to hold someone in the basement. What? Abi tünelleri hiç bombalamadılar mı? Yok, bombalıyorlar. You can't. The only thing they can do is just like blow up the entrance of the tunnel. Really, they they don't want to go in, so they just like drop bombs. They they will go up to a tunnel. I don't know if you guys have ever seen, but I watch it. They'll go up tunnels. They'll they'll go up to the tunnels uh through the entrance and like drop C four into it. They don't die, and it, it's all a matter of it's all a matter of like trying to like. Uh, it's all a matter of like uh, trying to ensure that like no no Israeli soldier dies basically, and it's not a good way to conduct military operations. And most people would not conduct military operations in that in that way, especially in like urban 
such a dense urban area. And I literally mean like even the fucking American military who is dog shit, okay? And genocidal. So, um, no, literally, I, I, guys, 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 you have to understand like the rules of engagement and the, and the complicated math equation of like civilians versus valid military targets is complete unhinged. Uh, in in the way that Israel is conducting its operations in, in Gaza. Like, there is no comparison. And part of it is because they just don't care about the civilians. They consider, in my opinion, they consider every single Palestinian civilian as an enemy combatant. Like, that's that's what I... Like, they, there is... There is... Uh, whatsoever. But, and I think that's part of the reason why... That's part of the reason just like... But, and I think that's part of the reason why, that's part of the reason why they're just like talking about, you know, babies reading copies of Mein Kampf or whatever the fuck, right? Because it's like, they partially, I don't know, they, they partially want to make it seem like uh, it's, uh, you know, everyone is, everyone is a legal target. A target. They're unironically not using combined arms tactics correctly from what I've seen. They all hide in the APCs, which means their armor has no cover from dudes or RPGs. Yes, yeah, same shit the Russians do, which is one reason why they've lost so much armor. They are doing that. Um, the difference is, uh, you know, the, the CIA and the American military and like the entire Western world is not. Armed. So am I the only person who feels the evidence showed is a bit too convenient? Like a woman's dressed next to a rope and a baby bottle. I don't know. I look, I have no reason to believe anything that the Israeli government has said because like they, they lost that privilege a long time ago, but it could be true. It, it might not be planted. The point is it's still not valid to fucking blow up a hospital on top of this uh this this placement area that they had for hostages for a brief moment okay it's not I don't want anyone to see him again we're in the same basement and here we search i don't know the basement of the hospital we can see it's a closed area yeah also like the explosive vest thing is weird because like i haven't heard of uh of like a suicide bombing uh for a very long time like, I haven't heard of Hamas using suicide vests, combat especially. I, I don't think that that is a part of the modus operandi. They, they used to use suicide bombings on military targets, and then they swapped it over to not just suicide bombings on military targets, and then they swapped it over to not just military targets, but, like, civilian targets as well. But I haven't ever seen... Um, I, I haven't seen them use a suicide vest uh, in a very long time, as a matter of fact. From the, the hospital. We can see the ventilation air... And Improvisely area, and we can see infrastructures that was built in here. Let's our a small kitchen will provide the terrorists their needs. Also conduct a hideout, a hideout where terrorists take hostages and. I don't get it. Like this is just the basement. Now of entering hospital. into the room where we suspect the hostages hold. I want you to this room. People are putting curtains with nothing above, just wall. No reason to put here a curtain unless. You want to film hostages and this list in Arabic, in our, this list says we are in operation. The operation against Israel started in December. Okay. When I see, when I see this, um, I don't know why they didn't show the, the tunnel entrance under the hospital though. I don't, I don't know what happened there. It's not a list. It's just dates and times. It's just a week calendar. I don't know. It could be fucking true. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I she don't sits care. down. She covers her eyes. Her colleagues also in blue hospital gear put their arms on. We must survive till the morning. We don't want to be killed here. The ICRC, the Red Cross, to arrange a safe corridor for the medical staff. Please treat this as top erector of major hosp trauma hospital in Gaza. I'm going to leave you with one more. To bomb a hospital means to terrify sleeping patients, to, to ruin equipment, human millions. That was Dr. Tanya Hashassan, pediatric intensive care physician who works with the humanitarian aid group Doctors Without Borders, reading an urgent message from the director of Al Shifa Hospital in Gaza, Dr. Nadal Hadrus. Dr. Hashasan, thank you so much for joining us. You must be, to say the least, beyond exhausted. You were reading that statement in London. I last saw you in Jordan, and now you're in Toronto, Canada. Can you talk about the latest? That was Saturday. This is it's now—
Just to be clear, you know, this was a vigil with multiple healthcare providers present who have been working in the Gaza Strip for, for over a decade. And we're, we're all in tears. I mean, reached the worst. And I'm going to quote one of my colleagues in Gaza, uh, a young female surgeon, who said, every day we think that we've reached the worst thing that could ever happen, and it's impossible that the world will be silent to it, and it will definitely get better, and we finally reached the end. And then the next day it proves that there's something even worse. And, and, and I, I share that sentiment. We, we have descended into a very dark era for humanity. Let me just paint a picture for you of the conditions as far as I know them right now. Just paint a picture for you of the conditions as far as I know them right now um, at El Shifa Hospital. I'd been receiving updates up, up until about an hour and a half ago. It's very difficult to receive updates. As you know, communication has been cut off, so they're intermittent. There's uh, certain uh, individuals who have... In El Shifa Hospital is the largest trauma hospital in Gaza. It is under complete siege. It has been come, come under a, a direct attack by uh, Israeli forces now. The medical staff, including uh, Médecins Sans Frontières, MSF staff, are, 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 are physically in the hospital at the moment. There are patients there with, in critical condition, hundreds of patients. And there are thousands of internally displaced individuals who are still inside that hospital, completely under siege, surrounded by, by Israeli tanks. They have no access to food. They're surviving on, on minimal dates and biscuits that are left in the hospital. They have no access to water. They describe being very thirsty. And as you know, they have no access to electricity. After the fuel supply was cut off, the electricity supply was cut off, and more recently, the solar power. They describe over 100 bodies lying on the ground, decomposing, dead bodies that they cannot bury. This is after having to dig mass graves in the garden hospital. The morgues cannot be cooled to preserve the bodies. As you know, there's electricity. So hours. There are 28 patients there. Two of them have passed the course of the evening. These are the adult patients. Someone messaged me about the idea of killing Israelis. The level of destruction would have been impossible by Hamas. But there's a lot of eyewitness testimonies, and we cannot investigate what's happened yet. The evidence is there for everyone to see. What do you mean? The days of the week, no apology, of course. Found at the basement of the Rantisi Children's Hospital in Gaza. List the days of the week, no apology, of course. Found at the basement of the Rantisi Children's Hospital in Gaza. A schedule is shown the names of Hamas terrorists who guarded the hostages. Every name on this list is a... <clears throat> I feel like it's Baghdad Airport, version Gaza. Um... They have no alcohol. Dialysis patients who require a city to run the dialysis machines because... Chat. Um, Israel's Western-focused propaganda relies on the West uh, not really listening to Arabic speakers and not really... I say this with clarity. They have also done this time and time again. They literally fucking posted a, a Arabic mother, a, a Palestinian mom, about how Israel killed his children. His, his third son, who was also fathered, uh, who father himself, they fucking posted it. Their official account posted it, changed the subtitles underneath it to say like, oh, I hate Hamas. Hamas is actually killing us. Israel is going to save us. I much prefer Israel to Hamas. The fact that, the fact that, like, shows me that they are, they're just fucking gross. They're gross. There is no end, they will tell. And a lot of that is uh, done specifically to flood the market with as much misinformation as possible and then move on because there's no repercussions for it. There is no... Just move on. You'd, uh, millions of people see it, you delete it quietly, and then you move on. No media member has been like, why do you guys keep lying? I have yet to see a single fucking mainstream media person. So why does the official mainstream media... So why does the official Israeli accounts and Israeli politicians routinely fucking do not have access to those dialysis machines? I can describe to you in detail what death will look like for these patients. Toxins will develop in their bloodstream. They will become overloaded with fluid because they cannot pee it out. They cannot pee the tongues out either. They will feel very unwell. They will probably get very confused. They'll have difficulty breathing and eventually they'll die. This is a slow, horrible, painful death, preventable, painful death, like all the deaths. Doc, Doc. Anyone who moved inside the hospital is getting directly killed. Two nurses were killed by snipers in the last 24 hours. Anyone who tries to leave the hospital targeted. You mentioned the 38 premature newborns, three of whom who've died are currently outside of the incubators. 
at risk of hypothermia without access to oxygen, and I'm not sure how they're gonna provide them with all the things they need, including food. This is an entire hospital that's completely cut off, and, and we've had very little to no news from the other hospitals in the north of Gaza. Last we heard, they're completely surrounded, like... And it's like the Hamas headquarters underneath it, and somehow that like Hamas is utilizing the hospital. As far as like the evidence that they've shown from this other hospital that was not in use at this point that they've blown up already, um, I'm not familiar with that other hospital. But as far as their uh, video that they showed, it's not good enough. It's not good enough to keep killing mercilessly and ruthlessly the people that are on top of this act mercilessly and ruthlessly the people that are on top of this active hospital, including international doctors and Palestinian doctors alike working round the clock to save lives the best of their it, we're, we're in Do we know that is even a hospital I'm not sure about the other uh, places they're saying a situation a where there has been a systematic attempt to destroy civil Palestinian uh, livelihood and events in in all of Gaza not just the north 30% yeah. of the killed have been in the south of Gaza, which is supposed to be the safe zone. Humanitarian corridors, or, or so-called humanitarian corridors, are called the corridor of death by Gazans because they get directly targeted as they're trying to flee on corridors. You know, Doctors Without Borders, and I mentioned we're really struggling to contact a lot of the staff. One of uh, my colleagues who, who I know at El Shifa said, we, we, are, we are sure we are alone now. No one hears it. MSF was established one of the main principles of MSF's establishment by journalists and doctors decades ago was to provide testimony, this concept of témoignage, which means bearing witness, to provide testimony, to bear witness on these sorts of atrocities that we don't, that are not exposed, and to relieve the suffering of those who experience them. And, and we're... The entire purpose of MSF is about people dying over... So you have to fucking white face to it, European face and a name to it. That's, it's a wonderful thing that they do, by the way. Don't misunderstand. But the real reason as to why it exists and operates is specific so that people go, I can't really trust this person. Um, I can't really trust this Arab person. I can't really trust this Palestinian person. Um, I can't really trust this Arab person. I can't really trust this Palestinian person. So let me listen to this white person. Like, let me listen to this person who is like an American French, Canadian, you know what I mean? From the Western world. That is precisely the reason why they do this. Same with similar structure, the reports without borders as well. Now, obviously, listen to me. This is still, what they do is important. Like, the reason for why they have to exist, however, is mostly because not hear the, uh, yeah, in their Western-centric brains, will not hear out victims. That is precisely the reason why um, when these doctors go on CNN and stuff, they don't ask them to condemn us, right? But if you are a Palestinian doctor inside of Palestine, they ask you about Hamas and the fuel that Hamas is using, blah, blah, blah. Like, they do that shit all the time. But even then, it, even then at this point, it doesn't matter because Israel has always had this carte blanche approach to being able to kill even white American citizens, as a matter of fact, as long as they are... Uh, you know, trying to defend Palestinian lives. Rachel Corey comes to mind, very public murder of Rachel Corey, 2003. Blonde, young American uh, woman activist, brave American activist, Washington, was ruthlessly slaughtered by an IF bulldozer. That happened. Everybody cutting it. People are just blind to it. Have you seen the Israeli representation of the UN? Yeah. Which is Meanwhile, this is what the fucking, this is what the psychopathic uh, uh, Israeli ambassador to the UN is saying on UN. It's not, doctors are all Hamas. Doctors without borders are Hamas. UNRWA is Hamas. The World Health Organization is Hamas. So Tedros, such as Mr. Lazzarini of UNRWA, such as Mr. Griffith of Ocha, from all the other libelous UN organizations, committees, and also, sadly, from the Secretary General himself. Do not, they do not reflect the situation on the ground. Yes, diplomatic nicety, niceties require us to thank their work. But sadly, they are relaying falsehoods that are completely detached from reality. For years, the UN has refused to establish verification mechanisms that can provide us a truthful picture. The WHO 
is it that supplies the UN with these so-called facts? Sorry. Who is it that supplies the UN with these facts? Is this information coming from unbiased and impartial third parties? The answer is no. Every piece of information regarding the situation on the ground that this UN employees in Gaza. I will remind the council that... What about this? Is that you can't have third parties on the ground is because Israel kills them. This is in the eve of Israel killing 100 UN workers. And he's also simultaneously and he's also simultaneously saying that the UN workers are also biased. What are you fucking saying? Like you're you're literally saying they're biased liars but also simultaneously you're saying they're Hamas adjacent. Also simultaneously there's no international uh there's no international community like organizations there. It's like, how could there ever be when you kill them and then also call the ones that are... That Hamas, a genocidal terror organization, controls every facet of Gaza. Every number from the so-called Ministry of Health in ha is Hamas. Many UNRWA workers in Gaza are themselves members of Hamas. The time has come to bust the myth of facts. This... The UN won't establish third-party verification on the ground, which Israel doesn't allow, by the way. Remember that. And then says, the UN members... That okay. You're surrounded by Hamas militants, dog. Maybe we should let Israel deal with that in the way that Israel knows how to deal with it while you're... By the very same terrorist organization that deliberately murdered and maimed thousands of innocent Israelis just 34 days ago. Hamas has ensured that every square meter of is under their complete reign of terror. Many ambulances drivers are Hamas members. Local contributors to international media are Hamas members. We saw this week that innocent photojournalists for Re Reuters, that innocent photojournalists for Re Reuters and the New York Times not only documented Hamas's horrors but crossed into Israel to film them with the terror. Such as literally was just literally. Yeah. Everyone is Hamas except for us, but maybe we're Hamas too. I don't know. You have to really be. Their line is that the journalists could have stopped October 7th. Their line is anyway. None of these fucking journalists were like embedded with Hamas, even though technically in a military operation, which October 7th was a, a brutal, barbaric, ruthless one. Okay, there are fucking journalists embedded with the IDF right now as they're murdering a thousand times more children than Hamas did. Okay, but it's not allowed to kill them. If you killed them, that would be complete. Those journalists were not embedded anyway. Okay, the idea that like censoring their faces, they're literally documenting war crimes. Like, what the fuck are you complaining about? Like, you're mad that they are documenting war crimes. That is insane. How are we supposed to know what the fuck is going on in the ground? Those dudes did something incredibly fucking bro Idea that those guys are all Hamas and deserve death is on October 7th. The idea that those guys are all Hamas and deserve death. Especially when you use their photography to say, look at all the fucking war crimes that Hamas engaged in on October 7th. It blows my Oh my God. But yeah, everyone is Hamas until I say so. Okay, that's it. Everyone is Hamas. Every single person is Hamas. This will never stop. These guys are genocidal monsters. Okay, genocidal. And no one is reining them in. I don't know what to fucking say. I to do. Yeah, the My Life Massacre literally had a U.S. Army journalist with them when they executed. All right, let's see this. In an extended interview, Krishnan Guru Murphy asked Israel's ambassador Do you have any empathy? to the UK, CP Hotoveli, whether she has empathy for the Palestinian people. Watch in full. Let's take a look at the whole... This uh, small place of... Okay, that's too long. That's the just Palestinian the position. I have zero empathy to people the time after time... Also, the three-minute ad break is upon us. I'm going to run it again. Sorry, I'm not. I'm just like blowing through it. I'm not doing it segues right now. I'm refuse to, to recognize the right of the Jewish state to their homeland, Jewish people in their homeland. I have zero sympathy because I want to, to live in a world where we can live together. How can but you they live deny, together but they deny if my you right have to exist. no zero empathy in your own words with those people? Their land, 
they committed the crime of attacking the small the, the small state yeah. of Israel and, uh, after the UN Barbie decision. Israel. So do you have they any empathy with time the Palestinian after time. people? Absolutely. I think that... What is your empathy? I think, Just I think my that. empathy to the Palestinian people, that we could have had a flourishing region, having the best high-tech, the Best no, life. that's an argument. No, no, no. I'm asking we you to ha had... share their pain for so, a moment. So I'll just, I'll just give you an example, okay? The best flourishing economic areas are in Judea and Samaria. I'll give you an example, okay? The best flourishing economic areas are in Judea and Samaria, where you have factories that have Palestinians and Israelis working together. That could have been the vision everywhere. But when you refuse to recognize the right of a Jew to exist... Yeah. This is so funny that she's saying that. Thank. And it's because... You can, like, exploit the inside state. So, so, in the occupied West Bank that they're really occupying, that was the entirety of the Israeli economy, you dumb fuck. It worked. Until Israel was like, oh, shit, we can't use Palestinian cheap labor no more because, honestly, like, we're too racist for it. We have to shut everything off. We have to just, like, make the occupation way... The... The legally occupied West Bank is like an economic when the conditions of said, uh, uh, you know, economic boost comes from literally indentured servitude in the form of like being victim to an occupation. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. This is where it fails. So I think this ideology that doesn't want Jews to exist, this is a tragedy. I don't think that's that... not empathy. No, what I'm trying to say that empathy comes when you have the understanding that they didn't believe that any of the Jewish people in the state of Israel need to exist. So there, there is no... That, the truth is there is no empathy between you and the people. I have empathy for the tragedy of the leadership, I mean, th yes. I have empathy that a, they are under the tragedy of their leadership. This is a very hopeless conversation, then, isn't it? No, it's not, because I think what's really hopeless... <laughs> I like that every conversation with an Israeli official... If they're talking, question them rather than just talking to a skilled interlocutor that genuinely wants to question them, rather than just, like, nod. Literally becoming the bloodthirsty freaks that they moss is. Oh, okay. Shit. Uh, what's the, what's the last... Okay. Shouldn't have eaten this much. Like, it's insane to me that they'll just be like, they'll be like, Hamas are bloodthirsty monsters that want to kill all the Jews, like they hate the Jews, and then they turn around and behave in the exact same way that they claim Hamas is, okay? And I'm sure there's people like that in Hamas. I know that there are people like that. But the difference is they're not getting interviewed by fucking Channel 4 and, the, and, and every other fucking news outlet. Like, Anderson Cooper isn't going up to, like, it's my... So, um... Can you tell us what's going on uh, with your with uh, why it's totally legal and valid to October 7? Like, it's nuts. There is no... There is, like, in Gaza, talking to fucking... Yev and, or, well, or Doha, and he's like, yeah, um, these Jews, they do not want... They do not recognize our right to exist, which is why we hate them and want to wipe all of them out. And then Anderson Cooper's like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Thank you for your conversation. Now we're going to talk about how bloodthirsty the Israelis are. Like, it never worked that way. It's just insane. It doesn't work that way. Everyone would say that's what these are. Like, it would never work that way. It's just insane. It doesn't work that way. Everyone would say that's getting ridiculous. But Israel gets to do that every fucking day. Every goddamn Is to build imaginary solutions. What's really hopeless is to think that a terror organization is something that will never hurt you. I think that the imaginary and the illusionary discourse that many people have need to be stopped. You cannot build peace on lies and illusions. It just, it, all projection, I'm losing my mind. Oh, I saw this. I think he by right? Because it's a, it's a convenient response, isn't it, that every time there is an Israeli strike on some sort of facility inside Gaza, you just tell us that Hamas is operating there and that's why you're fighting back. We understand no, I'm that. Sorry. No, the no, UN no, I'm here, sorry. though, is saying that its facility, the UN, internationally recognised body, the UN says that its facility in Gaza was attacked by your forces overnight and this morning reporting a significant number of deaths. The point no, is no, that I'm is sorry. in contravention yeah, to, of international humanitarian back. law and people need somewhere that back. is safe to go. If you're are telling them to evacuate from north of Gaza. I have to push back because the insinuation in your question is that Israel takes pleasure at taking pot shots at civilian facilities. That's not we what I'm saying. I'm just saying that every... 
they're killing a fuck again because some guy go on television like listen we take no pleasure we take no pleasure we don't want to do it we don't want to fucking do it we just got to do it now even in that situation like it's not even comparable it would hamas has no capabilities of doing october 7th you know what i mean israel is already done by the most you know what i mean Israel is already done by the most valid metrics. Ten. Okay. They've done 10. 10 of those. Over. They have all the power. They are the occupying force. They could just not. This notion, like whether you pleasure in it or not, is completely ridiculous. It has nothing to do with the conversation at all. Oh, you don't like blowing up hospitals? Shit, man. Well. You stop. If you stop. Response you make to my suggestion that you are targeting people when they are trying to find somewhere safe to go because is that you not. tell me Hamas is operating there. This is because, a new facility. Because, ben, Hamas has spent the last 16 years embedding itself underneath civilian areas in Gaza, building its headquarters under the hospital, exploiting ambulances, putting its own, you know, our troops have just discovered rocket launchers and weapon silos inside schools, inside classrooms, next to children's bedrooms. So that We're justifies attacking those are in the UN facilities. The answer. Yeah. Because it's a, it's a convenient response, isn't it, that every time there is an Israeli strike on some sort of facility inside Gaza, you just tell us that Hamas is operating there and that's why you're fighting back. There is a safe uh, evacuation for those babies, but it takes very specialised medical equipment to do that. Okay, hence the call on the, on the part of the WHO fiction on this. In the meantime, there's been conflicting reports coming through overnight uh, about the hostages. Uh, Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu speaking to the US network NBC said a deal is, is possible, could come about, and yet we're getting yeah. reports from Reuters via Reuters, Hamas saying no, they've stopped talking because of the... Well, first of all, when it comes to the hostages, we have had for weeks speculation, uh, the sense that perhaps a, a, a deal uh, to release a large number of hostages in exchange for a ceasefire and possibly also the release of Palestinian prisoners held by Israel. Those kinds of uh, discussions have been going on for a long time and at various points, and then it hasn't come to nope. fruition. So it's hard to read too much into either what Benjamin Netanyahu is saying or the, um, these denials by um, Hamas. I mean, my sense, talking to somebody uh, over the week who's familiar with the negotiations, is that, the, you know, the, the process is very intense. It is certainly happening. Um, the, one of the big problems is that... Even to logistically allow hostages breathing room so they can, like... Hassan is unsubstantiated, bad faith, small magandas. Thank you. Following since the notion that I am sub unsubstantiated, fucking the dog shit that Israel is peddling that keeps getting fucking disproven in a matter of like three and a half seconds is the saddest level of copium that you could ever. Mister, I don't cover breaking news. You are no, 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 no. You can, you can, you don't have to block all these fucking dipshits, dude. With their sock accounts. Because they're operating there, lol. Did the Allies take pleasure in World War II? Name one blown up hospital. Maybe some pay, maybe some paint scuffed. Dude, that is insane. That is insane. They blew up a fucking cancer ward. They blew up in the in the oh, hospital. They blew up the cancer ward with an artillery shell. Three days before the the fucking back and forth happened. They've they've dropped bombs on near every hospital. Okay, sure they haven't leveled them. Not all of them. Give me Aquafina. What does that mean? I don't know why they said that. Anyway, I mean, I think your entire existence is racist to me. The way that you're fucking operating in this chat is so psychotic. But um, please, please, just a little bit. Think about this a little bit. Think with a shred of morality. And you will recognize that, like, Israel's ass a little bit. Think about this with a, with a shred of morality. And you will recognize that, like, Israel's actions are 
utterly and entirely unjustifiable. People keep referencing World War II due to Allied bombing in World War II. We got the Geneva Conventions and the IHL to stop disproportionate effects on civilians relative to military. No, literally. <laughs> That's why we did that, okay? That's why we did that. That's the whole point. Even though America does still violate quite regularly, but nobody violates as, as aggressively as Israel does. It is fucking rid shit. That's awesome. Oh my God, that's your butt. No, Chatter said that it's an offensive username because Aquafina sucks. Hassan spreading misinfo. Oh, that. I I don't I don't get it. I don't understand how you could be this way. Like, explain, explain how this is morally or without fucking coming across as like a bloodthirsty monster. If your family was down there, whether held hostage by Hamas or if your family members were there, okay, because they were living in Gaza. You would never want this massive military superpower to come in and blow up the entire fucking block. You would not want that. You would not want that at all. But because you do not think that those people that are literally being blown up right now, that have dreams, right? You don't think about them like that. That it's totally just an afterthought for you. Okay? So go ahead. Out trying to be like, well, Hamas is using them. Hamas is using the places. Hamas is using the hospitals. Hamas is doing this. Hamas is doing that. You can't. He's con Hamas is using the hospitals. Hamas is, do Hamas is doing that. You can't. He's conveniently talking about the Hebron massacre and dismissing the Camp David hotel bombing in Deir Yassin, Tantura, Sabra, and Shatila. Or um, any number of different... I mean, he's currently talking about the Hebron massacre and, and like it for 7th. Well, simultaneously fucking not talking about... Well, simultaneously defending... Israel's actions. So I know what active is. It's such an odd line of defense that has never worked for me. I don't know why. Like maybe, maybe I just don't just eat it and sinker. But it it is such a weird thing to be like we're bombing the shit out of this like civilian population, and it's totally valid to do that because like. Like, that doesn't work. That would never work in any other circumstance. Think about it domestically. That would not work. You would never allow, in a million fucking years, an entire city block to be wiped out because there's, like, a... There. Okay? It's ridiculous. It that has never happened. That has never happened in a million fucking years. It will never be appropriate. So why are you so desperately trying to make it seem like it's appropriate circumstance? It's actually around communication, um, but certainly in the Israeli media, it's being suggested it can take anything up to two days for messages from the Israelis and responses to come back from. Huh, I'll give you a good example. The Waco siege. The unacceptable acts of cruelty, dumb fuck Americans, regardless of whether they agree with the unacceptable acts of cruelty that many dumb fuck Americans, regardless of whether they agree with the fucking uh, psychotic right-wingers or not would recognize as a, as an absolutely unacceptable way of dealing. So what the fuck do you mean? Like, why is the Israeli, uh, uh, the, the Israeli movement here, the Israeli air force operations seen as like, uh, seen as, as, as when it's like a thousand way it goes, they're not building behind me. They're getting dressed up. They're shooting. We're shooting. No, nude calendar. I already shot most photos. I have to, I have to get up and get dressed and get ready in like, huh. So it's clearly very, very difficult, but it seems that that possibility does remain on the horizon of a possible uh, release and potentially um, a large number. But beyond knowing that the discussions, it seems, have been continuing up until this point, I don't think we can speculate much more. OK, thank you for now. Tom Bateman in Jerusalem for us. Well, now let's bring you a special report from our international editor, Jeremy Bowen who assesses what could happen next in Gaza to Jeremy Bowen, who assesses what could happen next in Gaza. The beds were full when Mossabsa was brought in wounded. Gaza improvise. And a photo of premature babies at Shifa, the main hospital in Gaza, swaddled to stay alive after their incubators stopped power ran out. All born guilty of war. Yeah, imagine if the clan started doing terrorist bombings, you wouldn't support corporate bombing the South. Exactly. I would never support that. There are Nazis that operate within the U.S. military. 
I would not support nuking the entirety of the United States. There are Nazi cells that operate in, with with no repercussions whatsoever in the South. I do not, I do not believe. Just like in blowing up the entirety of Israel because of the IDF. In the other Hamas-Israel wars, it would be time for a ceasefire by now and back to the same uneasy status quo. News teams can't cross into Gaza, so they come to Storot, the nearest Israeli in charge. Israeli occupiers, an international force, Palestinians, if which Palestinians. Time it's different. The cost in lives from the Hamas to Israel's response thrust the conflict into unknown territory. With Israel on the attack, Prime Minister Netanyahu rejected a merit day after plan. The U.S. wants the Palestinian. The U.S. wants the Palestinian Authority rivals to Hamas to run Gaza after the fighting, and then a Palestinian Israel. Netanyahu opposes Palestinian independence and wants Israel. Danny Yatom, once the Israeli spy chief, said that's why the prime minister snubbed Israel's most important ally. Israel should not stay in the Gaza Strip. One, it will not be able to the Gaza Strip unless all the abductees are in our hands, back in a peaceful situation. And we won, we succeed Hamas. We won the war against Hamas. Now, there is a need to define what does it mean exactly to, to, to win. I define it as the collapse of Hamas' body. Yeah, everyone says this is not uh, a real uh, valid military objective, and it's one that you can't really... Like, even... I mean, it's not even one that you can totally enforce. It's certainly one that you can actually achieve with killing a shit ton. In my opinion, I think this is just a justification for an ethic trip, okay? That's it. What's going on? It's a chain of command. Israelis are united behind me, but not their prime minister. Israelis are united behind their army. These demonstrators outside his office in Jerusalem believe he is pandering to the hardline Jewish nationalists to keep him in power. Another big question for Israelis is the future of their Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He was a divisive figure before the 7th of October, and since then a lot of Israelis have started to blame him for the security and military errors that allowed Hamas to attack with such de there's anger that after Hamas killed and abducted so many, mostly Israeli civilians, military and intelligence chiefs accepted their share of the blame and the Prime Minister did not. And pressure is growing for a ceasefire in exchange for hostages. What is fighting Hamas, okay? Of course, the, the, the Hamas needs down, okay? But the, the question of how to do it is also a significant question. And before I want to kill one single terrorist, I want each and every one of these people home. I want the 10 month, I want that the 80 year old home. I want that more than I want dead terrorists. Once they're home, we can finish the job. The pain and hatred unleashed since the 7th of October. Almost every day in the West Bank they bury raids. This side of the occupied Palestinian territories is becoming the war's next battleground. The only answer, Western leaders say, is to revive the two states of independent Palestine alongside Israel. A failed idea that survives only as a slogan. Saddam, an advisor to the Palestinian president, put it all before. I think it's empty. An advisor to the Palestinian president heard it all before. I think it's empty. It's meaningless if it continues to be this way. If you want to do things, don't just walk, uh, don't just talk. Just You need to walk the talk and you need to implement things. If we continue with this uh, sloganeering without any results whatsoever. When this war started, Joe Biden warned Israel not be blinded by rage as America was after the 9-11 attacks by Al-Qaeda. Now, Israel's tactics alarming the Americans. 
They reiterate support for Israel, but say too many Palestinians have been killed by the war machine. Inside Gaza, Israeli military censors say we can't show the face of soldiers we filmed. Senior Western diplomats, firm Israeli allies, told the BBC that ending the war and dealing with the aftermath, the wall between Jerusalem and the West Bank is a monument to the death of the life. So what do we know? Well, events since the attacks of October the 7th have shown that this conflict is not something that Israel can manage and the world can ignore. There's also the history of a century of conflict between Arabs and Jews' control of this land, and that shows that the serious attempt to make peace, then there'll be more wars for more generations. But war hardens hearts. In Gaza today, in a brief, thousands more Palestinians fled the Israeli offensive. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News, Jerusalem. Imagine if one of these new ones was your child. Alive, we believe, at the time the photo was taken. Immediately I knew this had to be Channel 4. Like, that's why I scrolled that photo was taken. Immediately I knew this had to be Channel 4. Like, that's why... That, that's why I scrolled down. I, I, there's no way that they would start uh, this strong. Channel 4's coverage on this has been pretty According good. to doctors at Al Shifa Hospital, fuel for generators has run out. Babies taken off incubators to stay warm. What would you say to Hamas, accused of using them as human shields? What would you say to Israel, who've been bombing night for a month? The staff of the Shifa Hospital has requested that tomorrow we will help the babies in the pediatric department to get a safer hospital. We will provide assistance needed. But what and where exactly is safer? Premature babies, kidney patients, specialist surgery. Thousands at Al Shifa are now either being treated or taking refuge. And the tomorrow Admiral Hagari speaks of is now today. What people don't seem to understand is that Al Shifa is the main tertiary hospital. It's a hospital that does really complex things and no other hospitals do those things. So these patients haven't got anywhere else to go. And in that spirit, uh, but the most helpful thing would be to cease the fire fight now. That That's the practical thing. It would be also what we'd like to see is the hostages returned so and the fighting to cease. As we go to air, the Red Crescent saying Al-Quds Hospital in Gaza City is out. Here's a, here's a theory, okay? Single person, for everyone that like comes about Hamas, okay? For every single person, for everyone that like constantly talks about Hamas, 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 or whatever, the reason why I say that this is simply an expression, one very violent one, of of emancipation from the occupation from a militant faction that is internationally recognized as terrorist. That is the reason why uh, this is a helpful way to to talk about the situation is because this, if it wasn't. Hamas, but instead um, the popular front for Palestine that openly said that they were, or if it was Fatah, for example, that they were secular, liberal, right? And they still engaged in uh, attacks on military targets. Only military targets, no civilians whatsoever, okay? Yeah, they are, uh, you can call them terrorists, they're literal definitional terrorists. Yes, terrorism, however, is a legal designation or, or, sorry, a political designation given to people to deny them their habeas corpus, to deny them the, the actual normal uh, ways of dealing with enemy combatants. That's it. There's, like, it's it. The, the difference is between, like, Russia or, or what Russia is doing is, is, I can't believe I'm even making a comparison here. Like, Hamas and Russia are not even comparable. Like, it, it's boundaries of, like, the Western world. Why are we saying Hamas like that now? I'm just, every time I say that, I'm just, like, making fun of the way people say it. Okay. If it was Hamas, but it was Lip, do you think that they would not engage in some kind of violent retaliation when Israel behaved in the way that it did in the West Bank or even in Gaza? Of course they would. Now, let me ask you this question. If they were not blowing up Gaza, of course they would. Now, let me ask you this question. If they were not blowing up civilians and doing ruthless shit to civilians like they did on our 7th, okay, and instead only killed me members. 
if it was Fatah and they killed only military members on October 7th, do you think Israel would not be retaliating in this exact same way? If they only killed 200 military members, they blew up military headquarters, they killed a bunch of fucking military members, do you think Israel wouldn't be the exact same way? Of course they would. They would retaliate the exact same way. Not only that, we know already, we know they've done much less than October 7th and the retaliation has always been a... One second, chat. Flee down south to Khan Yunis. The bomb... NASA hospital no, still... Our, uh, but if we had stayed another five minutes, we would have been killed. They started to bomb us and we ran away from our Shifa. My son got injured, so I left him there. I just couldn't take him with me. IDF footage released today against a war. Thousands of dead Palestinian children, 240 Israeli hostages still held by Hamas. And tonight, what little Israeli hostages... And tonight, what little progress had been mooted behind the scenes to have stalled. Hamas suspending negotiations for hostage release because, they said, of Israel's handling well, let's go live now to our foreign affairs correspondent, Sekunda Kamani, who's in Tel Aviv. Sek, some very... Yeah, that's right. And I've just been speaking to a doctor at Al Shifa Hospital on the phone. He said that no one had been evacuated from the hospital. He said that of those very young babies you saw in the report, two tragically died yesterday, another one died earlier today. And he was deeply concerned that none of them would survive because they're he said, trying to do their best and keep them warm in the operating theater where they're being kept, but they still... For Israel, it's always a matter of ascertaining a viable pretext to commit violence. Anything in their eyes is an escalation, a sneeze in their direction, nuclear op and orphanage, yes. My point is this, guys. It doesn't matter. Everybody goes Hamas this, Hamas that, or whatever, and they talk about, like, um, the, the faction. They talk about, like, the political motivations of Hamas, uh, pointing to the 1988 charter, pointing to... Yeah, uh, we went through this, Hassan, is uh, a buy. We, we went through this already. Um, the, the propaganda of it is that I won't know if this is, uh, like, was an active hospital uh, in the time of its bombing. And ultimately, I don't think they show that there's any tunnel network leading out of this area. And, like, this is just a regular calendar and not, like, a, a terror calendar in the way that they're uh, claiming it is. This could very easily be like a, 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 a area for people to shelter under the intense bombing campaign, or it could very well be a uh, it could be an area that the the intense bombing campaign, or it could very well be a uh, it could very well be an area that the the uh, militants used as a placement area as a placing before they went to um, before they went uh, to the tunnel system. Now, having said that. It could also quite literally be like an area that they make the makeshift area for the doctors to fucking live in and their family members to live in. As we found out that uh, according to the personally, there's uh, a personally fucking uh, uh, give their own testimony on, uh, gave their own testimony on like where their families are. There, a lot of the doctors and their families have literally migrated into the hospitals and inside of the hospital. So, what would it mean for it to be a terror calendar? What are they trying to imply? No, everything that is they're showing is like this is my the the thing I was trying. To... Do you think Hamas not being secular is the reason why some of them kill civilians? Fuck no, no. The reason why uh, we're not done, are we? Oh, all right. It's a not a gimp outfit. Sorry, I don't know why. Hospital that was being used as a bomb shelter. Hours and diapers and chairs become evidence of hostage stories. The hostage list is an end is a calendar with nothing but days and dates. It could be. Oh, it's hair and make time? Okay. All right, well, I'm going to... I'm going to I'm going to get hair and makeup done. We'll be back. I'll be back in a second. Here, you, you deal with chat for now while I do that. We'll be back. I'll be back in a second. Here, you, you deal with chat. Okay, here. All right, chat. List. Yeah, just make sure that there's no... Yeah, just it's just sit here sure that there's no fucking... Okay. All right, well, I was going to do some chill time. Okay. Still are unable to run the incubators yeah. that they need. Now, 
Israel says that last night it tried to drop off 300 litres of fuel uh, for the hospital and it alleges that Hamas then prevented staff from accessing that fuel. This doctor I was speaking to denies that. He says that no one from the hospital was able to go and uh, access the fuel because he says they were too worried about being shot by Israeli forces. He also said that 300 litres of fuel would do very little because the hospital needed at least 10,000 litres of fuel to keep running. It seems there's a real war of narratives uh, between the two sides as well as a real and very deadly war going. Um, I feel like a substitute teacher who like just puts a video on for the class because he is not qualified to teach at all. And he's the events uh, around Al Shifa Hospital, negotiations around the fate of the Israeli hostages, there had been reports of uh, a deal underway to free a large number uh, of them, but it's unclear what level of progress had been made. Sekunda, thanks very much. Well, Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner is a spokesperson for the Defence Forces and he joins me now from Tel Aviv. Lieutenant Colonel, you were hearing there from our correspondent about this terrible stalemate over the fuel for Al Shifa Hospital. Eve. Lieutenant Colonel, you were hearing there from our correspondent about this terrible stalemate over the fuel for Al Shifa Hospital. Premature babies are at risk of dying, dozens of them. Will you undertake to suspend military officers? Kathy, the this evening and overnight, the IDF has conducted extensive efforts in order to alleviate some of the challenges that the people of Gaza and specifically the people in Shifa Hospital are facing. He rightly pointed out that we try to supply, uh, not without risk, mind you, um, some 300 uh, litres of fuel to the hospital. We put it out. The soldiers were carrying it. Um, and unfortunately, the hospital, which it appears that Hamas is uh, preventing, uh, the access to get the fuel for the hospital itself. OK, so while this horrendous stalemate continues, and the hospital, by the way, says that it needs 10,000 litres of fuel, you know, it's a war of words, it's a war of narratives. Will you not undertake to a humanitarian pause just to keep, to, to ensure the safety of these patients? We're trying to give the access, the needs for the people in the hospital, specifically for the babies, um, while we're trying to increase efforts in order to evacuate them. You know, nobody wants to see these images. It, it is indeed tragic and horrifying what the people of Gaza are going through. But ultimately, if Hamas is preventing 300 litres... You they don't, speak they of evacuating the, people, the, the babies the thing, the there. Thing that is, you speak of evacuating is, the babies. How can you evacuate babies camera, that are what? so vulnerable? And so I wonder whether the only answer isn't for a pause in fighting to ensure their safety. There is no fighting at the hospital. People can evacuate the hospital. We've seen thousands of people evacuate over the last few days, over the last five days, more than 200,000 people have evacuated. Okay, so where are they going to go? Gaza. Because nowhere in Gaza is safe at the moment, is it? We've seen bombing in the south. A thousand people have evacuated. Okay, so where are they going to go? Gaza. Because nowhere in Gaza is safe at the moment, is it? We've seen bombing in the south Get and premature ass. babies Get evacuated. Ass. Get his ass. Kathy, um, where there's a will, there's a way. We've been trying to make that way in the last 24 hours extensively. Uh, the only will that is being prevented here is Hamas's will to continue to hold 239 Israelis hostage, to continue to hold the 2 million people of Gaza hostage. We are in a war that, that we did not choose. They chose, they strategically opened a war with Israel. They have to go. This is what we are determined to do. Okay, so if is the most urgent priority... If they are using and Apologies for interrupting, but we're, we're, we're running short of time. United Nations if, facility. If I could just ask this, this, this is question. This challenge that we are facing. Yeah. We are determined... To, we are determined to make sure that they never wield this sort okay. of death. I'm sorry, that, I'm sorry that we're running short of time, but is the most urgent priority now to tackle the Hamas fighters that you say are in this hospital or to save these premature babies and other patients? Absolutely. We are trying to save these babies. This is exactly yeah. what we've been doing uh, since the, since uh, Admiral uh, Hagari spoke yesterday. This is what we've been trying to do. Hamas have been putting barriers in it. And, it's, and, and the Ministry of Health in Gaza, which is Hamas's Ministry of Health, is just a tool in the tool in the, in the theatre of death. This is what they're doing. This is what they're trying to do. Instead of being part of the solution, they are continuing to be part of the problem. This is the truth. Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, thank you very much for joining us. Joining me now. All right, well. That was fucking depressing. That guy's a fucking demon. How about like a 15, 10 minute palins from... I'll just field some questions regarding fear and 
or anything really. A little fun time, little fun time palate cleanse. How about that? And or anything really. A little fun time, little fun cleanse. How about that? Back into the bleak, horrific reality. I need some fucking back. Some lo fi, lo fi, right? Alright, chat's moving. I'm gay. Oh god, okay, hold on. Yes. Speaking to the microphone. Oh, sorry, my voice is not as like booming and crazy as Hassan's. Yes, to anybody who doesn't understand what's going on, currently all members of Fear and Hassan, Will, Cutie, Austin are filming a nearly or doing a photo shoot for a nearly nude calendar. Um, I have been capturing some BTS for it as well, so that our Patreon will get some BTS as well. So yeah. Near Hassan wants me to tell you guys that he's the only one for the record that did not pack his pants. He's not the he's only one. Yeah. They used cups. He he wants he's make he's holding making me say that. Um New calendars in the works. We just finished our set, which will be out in the next couple episodes. And, uh, we are doing a really fun collaboration video to be out in. And, uh, we are doing a really fun collaboration video tomorrow. We're shooting a very fun collaboration video, which I'm super excited about. I don't think I can leak it, but it'll be fun. It'll be cool, a couple months too. Um, Fear and stocks. Invest in Fear and stocks. And if and there's also a new update that dropped, so you know, go watch that. Leak it, leak it. Great episode. Marks, have you watched the bear? Yeah, I love the bear. How did you become the just by just like meet streamers in this circle and then they're like, yo, this guy, I'm and so they put me on. They're like, I'm gonna put you on now. Please get this demon off the screen. You're so right. Make we're just whole screen chat. How about that? But anyway, here's your 15, 10 to 15 minute palate cleanse with Uncle Marchi. We interrupt this broadcast for 10 minutes of QA. Don't worry, he'll be back. He's a Hasanabi head. Go on to radicalize me for most of my most of my free time. It's crazy to think like I was Hasanabi head for like two years to work with him, and I worked in a company called 100 Thieves, which Will used to be signed to. Um, and then, oh my god, if you guys could see what Hassan is wearing right now. <laughs> I just got flashbanged. Um, but then, <laughs> I just got flashbanged. Uh, but then Will approached me for and I'm like, damn, I'm done. He used to be my favorite, that guy. I think I love him. He's one of us. I'm literally in chat with bro. Hustle. Does he beat you? Yeah, he locks me in the next room over, um, and then summons me to do the podcast, and then locks my room again. Until then, but pays me well. Not that I get to spend the money at all, but I am a co-owner of the podcast. You know, socialism is so crazy, y'all. Wait, what was this? What is the material experience lane? I don't know. If you're a political... It's... What fear and tears the calendar? Uh, we haven't decided how we're going to do it yet, but it'll probably be... It's going to be available to every Patreon member at the very least, and we're considering opening it up to the public and then just handle Good Faith Forever show. Yes, I am. I will be there. If you can't tell, all congested. I've been, like, a little sick lately and a little out of it that's why <laughs> why chat <laughs> i wish i could show you guys actually i can lose stuff i'm the perk i want oh can't leak here i'll leak i'll leak a little bit of the set i'll give you guys a little taste okay just a little taste patreon members have seen this but for any fear and viewers in the chat who haven't seen here's a little I gonna focus? Might not focus. If it doesn't. Ooh, that's all. You, that truly is a leak. There's not much going on in this picture. You can't. Whatever. He's dark mode. Japan again? Yeah. I, uh, dude, so the thing is like. New mic. 
for more for the podcast. Oh my God, I walk over here. You want to show them? Okay. <laughs> they look into the craziest one yet. We're working with. People have already forgotten because Hassan doesn't. People in Hassan's community have the good times. We remember Uncle March, where I carry you guys around all over London and all over Japan. Now he just never leaves, so you never see me anymore. Now he just never leaves. Uppies? Uppies? Who remembers Uppies? You remember your all Now you forgot about me. Uh, but to anybody who actually doesn't know, because he gets a lot more viewers on his sit downstream, a lot of things here. I'm March. I produce Hassan's podcast. And um, uh, I'm just Hassan's producer in general for anything that isn't content. So. And right now, he's using me to vamp and keep you guys stimulated while he photo shoot off camera. Because I know you guys are all iPad kids and he's constant stimulation. Or rather, he knows. Anyone, any plans on having a camera on you in the podcast? So when I built the podcast, I was very thoughtful with like the blueprint I was trying to go with. Um, and I've answered this question before, but basically whenever I watch podcasts, I fucking hate when like pictures off camera chime in or have a camera on them. So I made the conscious decision with myself. Why I don't. I just like hate watching pods and then like. Where's the hidden? It's Lily. Pull that shit up, March. Dude, don't get me wrong. I just. Thanks for holding chat in Japan. Thanks for holding chat in Japan. Hope we can do it again. I mean, the plan is to go to Japan. The plan. There's plans right now to go to Australia. To go to Japan. But I just don't. I just. Like anything in Hassan's life, I'm gonna get like a one week notice. It really happens, and like. I have to do one constantly. Just be available. And I'm not complaining. It means that I can't have any deeper, meaningful relationships or friendships or time to see anybody that I actually am a slave to my. I'm, I... Oh, you... oh, okay. Take the, grab the gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cutie just walked in here, dressed to the nines, and grabbed a couple guns, which is our stupid little show and stuff. It literally, I mean, I've mentioned this before, and not to get like too cringe or real for a second, but they, everybody on camera, it's on Firan, they're, they're already rich gajillionaires, but Firan has like truly like changed my life and made, give me financial stability and freedom that I've never had before. Um, so. I, that's why I, I will forever be grateful to people who support the show. They, um, so I, that's why I, I will forever be grateful for our show. Yep. <laughs> March right now. Fear end is. Listen, man. I'm so. As soon as March touched some greens and social and shit. Yeah. Really. One more. Yeah. March replaces on for an episode of the podcast. People would not. That would be our worst episode. It'd be a, it'd be a ten out of ten episode, and like. Ten. But apparently, you can get it fixed. Apparently, there's like surgeries that you can like. Maybe I'll look into doing that. I don't know. Is it bad? Pretty bad, huh? A little insecure about it. Yes. No, I was. I, I didn't, I didn't develop glaucoma. I never noticed. I never noticed. Okay. What's your game of the year? I haven't really done. It's probably the year of East Gaming, but we Final Fantasy 16. That game was sick. Please stream more. I always tell myself I'm going. It's just between stuff I do for Fear and, um, and then I still work. Uh, for Ray full time as well <clears throat> and then trying to like maintain a healthy balance of like social life and personal like relationships I'm like dude streaming I, I just I, mean, I should do it and I want to and I, and I do enjoy it when I do it but it's just it's hard to do consistently especially like runs crazy like or Hassan and Ray ever tell me we get you the rest of the day yeah this is actually the rest Wow. 
any idea if Will's I stopped the episode of John Oliver to watch it here. I think he's gonna What's Kyle like IRL the sweetest girl? She's over there sleeping right now. I can see her. She's an eye shot. She's so cute and so sweet. Anything you'd want to change out of the podcast? Uh have a dedication. So I already did it. Can you upload a song? How long's the photo shoot? It's about to wrap up. The reason they took us on is because it's the last shot. He's done. Well, clues. Um the chips QA said a couple more minutes. Maybe like a minute or two. <laughs> everybody get your ready get your awares ready. Open up for your daily doom pill. I say that as if like I'm also eating taking my daily doom. You're a great pop. You're a great podcast dog. Next. I've only been doing this for a year. You think about what's next? Tomorrow. Do you live switch cameras or do you edit and post? I like we film we filmed today's episode last night. So it's like we filmed it last night and I have to get it out by 9 a.m. I would just not have enough time to edit camera ISO, so I switched to cut down the edit time. This was in Pure for us. It's my favorite pod and one of the best parts of my week. I love that. How long does it take they want to edit one episode? A couple hours, depending on stuff like that. Here he comes, y'all. Bye now. Okay. Uh, yeah, I still have a little bit. Um, fuck. Can you? Oh, thank you. Okay, we're good. Uh, we did it. Uh, the fuck? Did you turn on? Did you close all the? Did you close all the? Hi, bro. I swear to God. He closed all my windows. The thing. All right, we're good. We're good. We're just averted. Crisis. Um. Control Shift T multiple times. I just did good. We're back. We're back. Okay. Um. Wow, Israel, real Don Hassan emo. Okay. Um. That was if you guys only saw what the fuck I was wearing. Uh, on top of this outfit, the guy liner. Um, as long as I want to play a prank on you and cover your binoculars in ink. Yeah, I guess. All right. So, uh, Netanyahu, everyone in the world is sitting on the bleachers. He's just like talking shit. Care about what he has to say. Um, meet the Hamas, uh, attack victim families who want peace. Let's take a look at this. This, this is actually really of interesting. Of blood. Of revenge. We're also back. Top of the hour. Ad break comes back too. Here it is. Let's continue. For over a century. We are acting the same way and expecting different results. Able to see when there are people getting killed, especially innocent people getting killed. I think that in both of the sides, majority did want to live in peace. We can't... Dis I think there is... In both of the sides, majority did want to live in peace. We can't... Saturday morning, I woke up. 7.30, checking my WhatsApp that uh, uh, there are sirens and alarm. The bomb sirens. The fact that Washington Journal put this out tells me the NATSEC blob freaking out over Israel's act. I think that, I think that the major problem here uh, for what Israel is doing uh, with impunity is that uh, it is, uh, one, undermining America's influence in, in what its regional allies uh, do, okay? in the eyes of the entire world, in the eyes especially of the third world, or, or those who are disconnected from, like, the, you know, the periphery nations, those who are disconnected from uh, being involved with the United States of America. It also shows uh, everyone else that, uh, you know, America's influence in, in control over Israel is waning, but also, well, also it has a capacity to pull the entire region into conflict. And that is a terrifying prospect for everybody. Because remember what I told you guys, there is a calculus, there's a limit to how much help will be afforded. It is, you know, old weapons that we'll send, maybe HIMARS down the line, yada, yada, yada. But it's not, it's not enough to trigger nuclear holocaust with a nuclear superpower. That's why there's red lines that are, uh, there's red lines that are not crossed, right? That are not really mentioned even, or only mentioned when push comes to shove, like, uh, instituting a no-fly zone uh, over Ukraine, which would impede even or only mention when push comes to shove, like uh, instituting a no-fly zone 
uh, over Ukraine, which would imply, uh, which would mean that American fighter jets have to blow up Russian fighter jets. Like that would never happen, right? They can't do that because they don't want to go into a full blown uh, regional. Not even, they want to. They want to. They don't want to change the dynamics of the battle in Ukraine. It is two nuclear armed states fighting against one another, which is mutually assured destruction. Nobody wants that to happen. Uh, with Israel, obviously, tech the nuclear armed state. Um, but what America does not want is for Israel and Lebanon, Hezbollah in Lebanon, and Yemen and Iranian forces, Iranian backed militia forces within uh, Syria and, and Iraq to invade Israel on multiple fronts, opening up like a six-front war, okay, that America has to deal with by exactly how the DNC got away with doing what over when Joe Biden was objectively going to be a horrible, horrible second. Too much war. Does that make sense? Like, there is, a, there is a, an amount of war that Israel can conduct and engage in that Americans calculate is totally legally permissible, totally valid. It's, it's economically viable. But if you go past a certain point, then it no longer is economically viable because it spells full-blown catastrophe and collapse, which is why America keeps saying, please keep it, uh, you know, keep it marginal, keep it minimal. Like, we know you are bloodthirsty. We get it. Like, you want to fucking kill every Palestinian uh, for, for its, uh, because you think that they are all equally responsible for October 7th. But you can't do that because if you keep if you keep blowing up housing, it's like you're, you're one making it harder for us to engage in normalization agreements with other Gulf States because now they, uh, or at least like the populations in the Gulf States are going to, uh, get very mad and, and, uh, turn sour and maybe even like engage in revolts against their own governments. Uh, if there is, uh, if there is some kind of like, uh, Abraham Accord continuation, like, it's just Israel's own bloodthirst is getting in its way once again with uh, America's goals in the region. That's precisely what's happening here. That's why they want to dial it back. They don't want to dial it back through for humanitarian reasons. They want to dial it back for economic reasons and, and also for reasons of, of America's geopolitical interests in the region. That's it. Has Israel not gone past that point, though? I think Israel has gone past that point. Uh, but in America's eyes, they clearly haven't because if... Israel had gone past that point, according to America, they would stop. America would force them to stop instead of just telling them, do like a lighter version of ethnic cleansing and not the full-blown version that you're engaging in. Considering the fact that America has not shut off the money faucet or told them to stop completely, it seems like, it seems like, uh, you know, they're, they're still within the confines started to go off in Jerusalem. I understand what is going on. I call my mom. Hey, mom, are you okay? My dad told me, yes, there are many shooting and missile landing around, but we are okay. We are in the safe room. And when I turned on my phone around 8.20, two text messages popped up immediately. The first said, I love you. And immediately the next one said, I'm sorry. He was at the music festival when the massacre started to take place. All the young people tried to take cover in these roadside bomb shelters. It came under heavy attack with uh, hand grenades thrown in and an RPG was shot into it. The eyewitnesses told us that his left arm around the elbow down had been blown off um, and he walked out of the bomb shelter. Israel's the only country in history to give warnings before bombings. Yeah, Israel's also one of the very few countries uh, on, you know, in 2023 to have uh, such a rigid apartheid structure uh, that it can only continue to enforce with uh, the, the entirety of the Western world defending it. Uh, without, without America funding and facilitating this apartheid, Israel would not be able to maintain it. So... The idea that like uh, they're giving warnings before blowing up inside, uh, blowing up residential buildings inside of their own fucking concentration camp is is ridiculous. How about I give you a warning before I blow up your house? You would never find that to be appropriate, right? Like, and then after the fact, I say, well, intel shows that, you know, intel shows that there was a, 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 a enemy combatant inside of your fucking house, or maybe even under your house. You might not even know that there's an enemy combatant under your house. That doesn't mean shit. 
Chatter's fucking wrong. The U.S. warned Nagasaki and Hiroshima before the atomic bombs, which are all which were also morally reprehensible. Yes, I guess it's chill though to nuke a fucking you know entire civilian population. Those knocks are also inconsistent. Sometimes they knock, sometimes they don't. Uh, and regardless, even if they knock before they blow up, they still blow up a fucking home. So it's still completely ridiculous. It was loaded on a. Uh, Hamas pickup. Yeah, that's not even true. The U.S. also did during Desert Storm. They dropped pamphlets that said tomorrow we drop bombs, and they didn't lie. They did drop bombs the next day every time. Anyway. Um, Truck. His last phone cell signal was found inside of Gaza at 1025 in the morning, and um, that's all we knew. Pizza Hyman was in a home in Kibbutz near Oz where a quarter of the residents were killed have gone missing or were taken hostage. Japan would have never surrendered without the USA nuking it. Yeah, that's also uh, a historical. Many, many people have written about this exact same thing. Japan had already brought up a conditional surrender. America said, no, no conditions on the surrender. One of the major conditions being that the emperor maintains his position of power, except America nuked twice for no reason. Like, let's say they had the nuke once, but they nuked twice, two days in between. Uh, and... And then also still allowed uh, the Japanese emperor to survive. So uh, what happened? They, they, literally, they literally were on board with the conditions regardless after dropping two fucking nukes. Um, just a, a, a basic understanding of history will show uh, that you are completely wrong on this, on this issue. It was Sean that did a video on it, yes. Also, uh, the funny thing is, this is, uh, this is a, a very, like, Israel-style defense of the nuking of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Um, I do like that you are, are, you know, making an example. You're, you're responding with an example that, like, uh, Israel uh, also engages with whenever they talk about it, whenever they talk about how their morally uh, permissible bombings occur. Now, one, one other counter to this also is that America itself... This was one reason that they used. The other reason was, well, the firebombing campaign was way more deadly. And it was. Firebombing uh, Tokyo and, and many other civilian uh, dense populations was brutal. It actually killed a shit ton of people and it destroyed uh, so much uh, public infrastructure. Now, the answer to that was, well, we had to drop one nuke and then we could have stopped the fucking firebombing is a ridiculous uh, is a ridiculous answer. Like, oh, one big, one big, big war crime is better than like a succession of war crimes over the course of a month is ridiculous. How about no war crimes, right? That is supposed to be the answer. It's not that like uh, we should do more war crimes or we should do one big war crime one time instead of multiple war crimes. So you're saying it was effective, grunt cores. Brother, this is a ridiculous fucking assessment. OK, like might is right. Politics will find you in a really precarious position when America is no longer the dominant force. OK, I just want to I just want to mention here that like since we're on the tail end of our crumbling empire with 800 military bases all around the world. Uh, and I'm sure you're familiar with this since you're either a LARPing uh, tactical gravy seals dipshit with the name Grunt Corps or a LARPing tactical dipshit who uh, is a veteran and still loves the fucking good old days that where you could eat MREs all fucking day and pizza uh, when you were lucky before you were deployed and then uh, still maintain a decent physique, which you no longer can because you're a couch ridden potato with PTSD as a consequence of doing the bidding of American empire overseas that destroyed you, destroyed you, rotted you to your very core and then lied to you about fixing you up and never actually ended up fixing you. Um, one or the other. These are two options that of, of what you are. Okay? Destroying infrastructure is the point. Whether I agree with it or not is not besides the point. No, you are agreeing with it because you said it's it was effective. It was e effective. Ridiculous. Okay? What's effective is that <laughs> what happened to you is unacceptable. Either you are a hoorah dipshit who never served or you are a hoorah dipshit who did serve and ruined your fucking body. Okay? Both of these situations happen as a consequence of American chauvinism, Western chauvinism, American exceptionalism, and the jingoistic attitude that was baked into your fucking brain from uh, early on. You have the moral obligation to snap out of it, okay? To become human again, please. 
in uh, 10 a.m. we lost contact with her. Uh, my sister called me. She tried to call mom again and the Hamas answered her phone. A few days after, we saw in a Hamas Facebook page that they took her into a car. And that's all we know until today. Bilha and Yaakov Inan were at home in their village of Netiv Hazara near Israel's border in northern Gaza. I watched the news and I saw Toyota trucks in the road. I saw the wall falling apart. We tried to call again and again and there was no answer. And around 5 in the afternoon, uh, the security uh, guy of the community called my brother-in-law and he told him that my parents is burnt to ashes with two bodies inside. Drowning in this ocean of sorrow and pain and agony. But my mind is very clear. My goal number one is to bring all those that are kidnapped and being held hostage back home. It must be through a, di- through a diplomatic agreement. Goal number two is to stop the war and immediate ceasefire. We have these constant cycles of extreme violence, and it seems that it's really not working. I don't know that it's ever worked anywhere. I have a lot of anger on the Hamas people, of our government, but I don't think uh, to escalate the war uh, will help us, not to bring them back and not to uh, give them a peaceful life after. Innocent civilians in Gaza are being killed. Their death won't bring my parents back. Their death won't bring those that are kidnapped back to their families. For some people, a natural response to trauma is to feel hatred. This pain that we are feeling is so unique and indescribable, but I really would never wish it on anyone. Not anyone. Not even the people who are doing it to me. That's how bad the pain is. When direct victims of the horror are displaying more restraint than decision makers and media talking heads, you know the world is fucked. Yeah, because the media talking heads are operating the direction of whatever the fucking uh, military objectives are, whatever the the economic objectives of the military industrial complex is. Okay? Washing runs so deep. I literally had a multiple hour long conversation with my mother that Israel is a higher chance of killing the hostages than Hamas. Yeah. I mean, it, it just, it's just, it's basically, what is the rational objective here? You don't take hostages just so you can kill them, right? They killed a shit ton of people. They killed 1,200, 1,200 people, okay? And the overwhelming majority of the people that the, the militants killed were civilian. A lot of them were just like literally driving around and shooting at whoever the fuck they could because... Whoever the fuck they could because they were just like, they were just inside of Israel proper for the first time in an overwhelming number with an overwhelming force. I had multiple hour long conversations with my father. Hamas and ISIS were not the same thing. Yeah, it's just, the question is this. They already killed 1,200 people. Why would they take 230 hostages if they want to just like simply kill them in a moment when they get like passionate and angry, right? It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. If they were to, and by the way, I'm not going to say that they would never kill a hostage. They 100% would. They 100% would. Any militant faction, terrorist, not terrorist, whatever you call it, white, black, uh, brown, Muslim, 100%, they would execute a hostage if push came to shove, but they would do it on camera, okay? They would never, they would never just like kill a hostage off camera for funsies, okay? That's insane, Why the fuck would they kill a hostage off camera? That defeats the purpose of killing the hostage. That defeats the purpose of taking the hostage. When your supplies are, when you, when your supplies are, are really low, when you have really limited supplies because you're under full blown blockade, no reason to just like fucking execute a hostage unless you are doing it as a statement to show you're serious, to say, listen, we made you a demand. You refused to negotiate with us. So here is now. We're killing this hostage now because of you. Like, that would be the only reason. Because the hostages are the only leverage you have. Meanwhile, it's not even real leverage because Israel doesn't want to negotiate with Hamas, it seems. You are assigning perfect rationality to terrorists, which simply isn't true. No, the terrorism designation, for the record, is quite literally the reason why you don't want to assign perfect rationality in this circumstance. Okay? There is no perfect rationality uh, in, in a bunch of fucking militant brigades operating uh, under a command structure that is 
divided at best, okay? That's precisely the reason why October 7th and the innocent civilian death toll was so high, right? Once the hostages are, are taken, there's a very specific reason for taking those hostages. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect rationality. It just is self-preservation. Do you understand? It's so stupid. Where is the rationality of killing the hostages instead of negotiating? It just, it doesn't make sense. They, they would have never taken a hostage in that situation then. You know, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, why would they take a fucking hostage? Just because they, like, are, are so bloodthirsty that they were like, oh, I'll just take this hostage with me so I can kill the hostage later when I'm, like, hungry for blood again? Like, is that what you think is going on? For rationality and hostage taking? No, the reason why you're saying that is because... The reason why you're saying that is because you don't want me to. You don't want me to look at it in a serious way. You want to just say, no, these guys are fucking... Uh, bloodthirsty monsters who are just operating on on the good and bad scale that's why you say openly don't look for rationality here just let just let fucking israel keep bombing and shut the fuck up and bomb the hostages themselves you might not even recognize why you're saying that of course there's a reason otherwise why the fuck would they take hostages why would they take hostages why do you think hostages are like fucking uh, uh, uh road soda do you think it's a fucking snack like these guys, they're like vampires. They love, they love sucking the blood of like Israeli civilians. And then they were like, oh, let's bring some more back to the base, to the base camp. So we can just like keep eating the Israeli hostages every now and then when we get thirsty for it. Is that what you think is going on? No, there's a fucking reason. Things do not operate on the basis of like good and bad in the real world. People aren't just like, people can do bad things, okay? And for example, October 7th, bad very bad okay obviously obviously very bad but if you want to truly solve an issue you can't just like keep fucking pummeling it with brute force if you want to solve an issue especially an issue like this especially a crisis like this one you can't keep fucking hammering over and over and over and over again and expecting different results that's how we got here to begin with okay do you understand? In simple terms, serial killers don't take hostages. They just kill with no regard. Taking hostages means you're uh, put thought into it and want to leverage for a reason. Exactly. The problem here is that, like, I'm not saying this was cool or good that they took hostages. Like, I'm not saying that at all. Okay? I'm very much against taking hostages. I'm very much against killing civilians. I'm very much against killing in general, which is, which is why I want this conflict to end. But there are plenty out there who do not want this conflict to end at all. They want to continue it as slowly but assuredly, as, as best as possible, as they slowly but surely engage in ethnic cleansing and ethnic displacement and take over more land. That's not true. They will take them and torture them to death. Why would they do that without showing on camera why they're doing such a thing? Oh, you mean the serial killers. Okay, that's so freakish. I'm not even saying, I'm not even saying that like Hamas won't kill the hostages. They could. I don't believe they have, but they could just as easily. They could do that. But there's a reason why they treat the hostages, as far as we understand, by the hostages relatively well, because they want to do propaganda off of it. This is a fact that Israel knows too. That's precisely the reason why they got mad. When that lady, when that older lady gave uh, the, the international community an interview, as soon as she was released, the lady that said shalom to the, to the Hamas militant and shook his hand because they wanted to do propaganda. That's why they fucking treated the hostages very well. Hostage is not an easy process. It requires a tremendous amount of forethought. You, you, you have to literally plan for years on end. Why the fuck would they just blow it and, and, and kill the hostages? And if the only answer you have to that is because, if the only answer you have to that is, well, because they're just like bloodthirsty monsters, then like, how can I have a conversation with you about this? Like, that's not interesting, nor is it actually intelligent. And it's not how you're supposed to solve a problem. In order to solve a problem, you have to identify why that problem is existing to begin with. Okay, you have to go to the root cause. You have to figure out why this is happening. And if your answer when you get to the root cause of the problem is, well, some people are just bad guys and they're bad because they love Allah and Allah told them to be bad and because they're anti-Semitic or whatever the fuck, then yeah, okay, well, you'll definitely turn around and, and agree with like everything that Israel's doing right now because why shouldn't you? They're bad. They're fucking subhuman. They're not real human beings. Like there's no, there's no reason. They, they, they took up arms because they're, they're uh, anti-Semitic specifically.
that is, yes, exactly, the Sam Harris argument. Islam is anti-Semitic, and it creates anti-Semitism, and that's the reason why these guys are behaving the way that they are, because they're anti-Semitic. Like, they're a bunch of fucking campus activists who are also anti-Semitic, right? You're, you didn't arrive at anything. You didn't, you didn't actually arrive at a, at, a, at a decent analysis over the subject matter. You didn't come close to a solution beyond what Israel is doing in that position, in that point. Now, I ask you the question, if what Israel is doing is so successful, how the fuck hasn't it been successful the eight other times they did this? Not to the same degree, but they always fucking go into Gaza in what they call the last time, where they just like, yeah, we don't want to like completely eviscerate Hamas. You think that's what they were saying? They were like, no, 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 we just want to cripple Hamas. We don't want to completely eviscerate Hamas. We don't want to completely eviscerate Hamas. We just want, you know, that. We just want to like, uh, you know, push him a little bit. Just siege, bro. Just one more dead Palestinian child, bro. And I promise, I promise, just one more dead Palestinian child, and then Hamas is over, okay? I'm Palestinian. I'm against Hamas. I'm lumped in with people who deserve to die and terrorist sympathizers, although politically I oppose Hamas for various reasons. What do you mean, terrorist sympathizers? Like, do you think, do you think people that live in, in Gaza, do you think people that live in Gaza are, are just automatically terrorist sympathizers? Even if they are sympathizers of Hamas, do you think, like, let's say a child is a sympathizer of Hamas. Do you think they deserve to die? Is that, is that your argument? Like, I don't really understand what you're trying to say. Because then it means, like, oh, if you voted for Hamas, or even if you have any kind of sympathy for any kind of violent, emancipatory, militant faction that is, like, actually fucking fighting bad, right? Good or bad, reactionary or not, if you don't sit there and just fucking take it, when Israel is like brutally and merciless, mercilessly slaughtering your people in the West Bank and, and taking up more and more land in the West Bank, then you turn around and your, your answer is like, no, we're supposed to take that. And then magically one day Israel will fucking allow us to coexist peacefully. Well, if that was the case, then you would be able to, you know, coexist peacefully in the West Bank. If that was the case, the Palestinian Authority would be the most powerful Palestinian institution on the planet. The most popular Palestinian institution on the planet. Palestinians I'm automatically labeled that yeah well that's ridiculous uh, you should defend Palestinians it's ridiculous to say that you can't defend Palestinians I don't care I think people refuse to look at the root cause and just go ooga booga genocide then peace um because it it corresponds to the interests of the Israeli government so I believe in the subject the hostage taking from both sides the hostage taking from both sides as Hamas tries doing it for negotiations but I'm not too sure our view uh, the Zionist Israel taking hostages to pressure out info about locations and such. No, uh, no, the, the forcible detention, uh, the unlawful forcible, uh, the unlawful unauthorized detention of thousands of people under, uh, uh, you know, the, the Israeli military courts where there's no legal recourse, okay, uh, is not done specifically for taking hostages so you can use them. It's just a part of running an apartheid. You have to, it's the same principle behind why you have to constantly maintain a presence, right? To show that the knife is always there. The IDF routinely conducts military operations in areas inside of the West Bank where they know civilians live. Why do they do such a thing? Well, if you ask former IDF veterans who operated in the West Bank who started breaking the silence, they will tell you the reason why they do that is specifically so that they apply pressure at all times to show the West Bank Palestinian civ uh, civilians that they're there, that they can come into their house, break down their door, and maybe arrest them on a moment's notice. You have to do that. You have to do that in an apartheid regime. Otherwise, people will go, okay, well, what the fuck are you doing? I'm going to violently revolt. It is well within my rights and legal responsibility and moral obligation, as a matter of fact, to do so. That is it. I also have a lot of friends who are in Gaza who are being bombed now who have always opposed Hamas. Hamas is not a popular... Hamas is a popular political group, okay? There are polls that are conducted in uh, the Palestinian-occupied territories all the time. It's more popular than, however, in the eyes of Palestinians, both in Gaza and the West Bank, which is not really saying much, is the Palestinian Authority. Why? Like, th like, think about how fucking, how unfavorable the Palestinian Authority is. Why is that the case? That is Israel's design for the Palestinian Authority. Just like every single Israeli administration has propped up Hamas as the only entity that defends Palestinians. There's a streamer on Twitch supporting this genocide. 
Of course there are. There are plenty of streamers and plenty of famous people and plenty of people in positions of power that are supporting this ethnic cleansing campaign. The victims, as always, are Arabs and Muslims, uh, predominantly Muslim Arabs, so nobody gives a shit. Remember, if you say America deserved 9-11, you can get banned. But if you say Iran deserves a, a nuclear a bomb, then you will not get banned. Okay? Iraq deserved to be invaded is not going to have the same level of emotional response. It won't invoke the same level of emotional response from the Western world, even though America's invasion of Iraq led to millions of people dying, being murdered, ruthlessly slaughtered. Okay? That's it. That double standard is always going to exist. Now, on that note, let's get to Israel-Hamas war last week tonight with John Oliver. I've talked about this before. Framing this as Israel-Hamas war, immediately suspicious. Why is it suspicious? Because this is war. If this is Israel-Hamas war, holy shit, they are so bad at fighting Hamas. Oh my God, they are the absolute worst at fighting Hamas. 10,000 people, uh, 11,000 people as far as we know because we don't know the actual official death count any longer because the hospital, the main hospital is literally under siege currently, okay? Uh, children, uh, they're not Hamas, but that is how the media covers it, which I think is ridiculous, but let's take it. Israeli hostage from between the rebels who will really turn the Israeli people against their government more. Uh, I think what you're describing literally happened today. I'm not entirely certain, but uh, I think that uh, Israel is that uh, Hamas released or not. Uh, Israel is claiming that one of the hostages that uh, Hamas released or not released, but Hamas said was killed in rocket fire. Fuck, I saw something literally while I was so I. I'll, I'll look into it. But from what I understand, uh, one of the hostages that died, uh, Israel is claiming, did not die by rocket fire, but instead... Overall, uh, the reason why people shit on the video is because, obviously, the video is, like, uh, you know, doing the both sides stuff and doesn't talk about the historical context of how Israel's an apartheid. Is this... Is this the video? What? Hamas released a video showing, I believe, the first evidence of Israeli hostages that were killed as a result of IDF airstrikes on Gaza on October 11th. A 19-year-old who Hamas says with a military conscript. The imagery of her dead is horrible, and I won't post it here, but it's clear that either shrapnel or an expl explosion of some kind severely injured her in her legs, following then by an injury to her scalling. Um, I, and I think Israel said that they cure process slash learn together. Nuts, dude. Sometimes when I actually learn about something on stream... People literally will clip things that I said it, it, while I'm like in the process of correcting myself and then go, look at what he said. They'll clip literally the first 10 seconds of me asking a question to unironically go, to unironically fucking go, you, see, I knew it. Unironically go, to unironically fucking go, you, see. Also, there's a lot of TOS when, uh, when I'm, you know, doing uh, research as well literally will people literally will use opportunity also that would require me to like fucking live stream even longer than i currently do okay but people use any and every opportunity to basically go oh this guy fuck so I'm not going to do that. I want to tell Hassan isn't going to happen. I don't know if Ethan brought this up, but there's more than 2,000 years of history, plus God promised that there was their land. They won't merge unless, I don't know, we're talking. The whole, like, God shit is ridiculous. Nobody, that, that's not, we're, we're not living in the fucking 17th century, okay? Get the hell out of here. You know where you work after streaming 12 hours? Mr. Buddy Buddy, that's literally. <sighs> Unleashed a firestorm of controversy in the United States and Europe. Watching it all, I do wonder, does anyone believe in free anymore? Now, to know, I have strongly condemned the attacks of October 7th. Those that praise Hamas in any way are blind to the reality that it has been the principal opponent of a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian question. But the question to grapple with is oh, how to handle views that either side for the Palestinian question. But the question to grapple with is oh, how fuck? to handle views that either side fully offensive. And of course, speech and assembly are not the same as physical intimidation 
and harassment which privil discourse. Until very recently, most concerns about free speech on college campuses were related to conservative speakers from Ben Shapiro to Condoleezza Rice being protested or disinvited. Conservative state legislators introduced dozens of laws to protect campus free speech. In 2021, House Republicans started a campus free speech caucus to protect free expatiation. Every single supposed campus free speech activist, fucking right winger piece of shit, vice and whatnot, defended the right of like an alt right figurehead. And while they were doing that, and I said this for five years, even back then, so straight up attacked BDS and Palestinian activists. You're only right now, like, there's never been a position. Al Dershowitz did the same shit. Gary Wise did the same shit. So many of these, like, so many. There's a reason why also have anti-BDS legislation. No, there is no, there is no real like, absolutism. And certainly in the United States of America, especially if you go against the American State Department interest. In January 2021, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis said the important legislative issue to get right in the next couple of years was the protection of controversial speech. The legislative issue to get right in the next couple of years was the protection of controversial speech. Not anymore. Late last month, DeSantis reversed course, directing Florida State University's chancellor to close down campus chapters of Students Justice in Palestine. DeSantis accused the group of giving material support to terrorism, though as far as I can tell, these groups have only organized protests and rallies. As the GOP presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy has pointed out, courts have made clear that verbal support for extremist groups is very different and constitutionally protected from sending money or arms. Other conservatives have tried to publicly identify and shame students belonging to groups that voice support for Hamas. A hedge fund manager proposed circulating lists of these students to ensure that they don't get jobs. Many donors have demanded that universities issue statements, either condemn Hamas or supporting Israel, some even insisting that certain rally speakers be banned. Many college presidents issued follow-up statements when their original responses were not seen as sufficiently strong in their support of Israel or association of Hamas. This is all a far cry from where you... By the way, this guy literally defended the South African apartheid. Out. Okay? Okay? Consistently defended apartheid. In 1967, in the midst of the passions of the Vietnam... Nope. Here it is. And Fareed Zakaria, a former argued that Yale should not divest from its holdings in South Africa. Zakaria spoke at a debate last night between the PU... PU... And the Yale Debate Association, he was always a debate lord too. The PU, PU, and the Yale Debate Association, he was always a debate lord too. And the Civil Rights Movement, a report by a University of Chicago committee. I wonder if he'll talk about, I wonder if he'll talk about like, you know, BDS activism in apartheid South Africa. Shared by the eminent legal scholar Harry Calvin, eloquently argued that the mission of the university could not be fulfilled if the institution formally took positions on controversial political issues of the day. The committee wrote, a university, if it's to be true to its faith in intellectual inquiry, must embrace, be hospitable to, and encourage the widest diversity of view within its own community. It is a community, but only for the limited or be great purposes of teaching and research. It is not a club. It is not a trade association. It is not a lobby. Simply put, the university is the home and sponsor of critics. It is not self the critic. The basic argument for free speech espoused by the Calvin Report is that it is better to hear those you violently disagree with than ban them or silence them. That way, debate happens out in the open, points match with counterpoints. The alternative is to drive discourse into the shadows and glares of political life, where it festers, turns into conspiracy theories, Grown in 77, a court ruled that a group of Nazis should be allowed to march in Skokie, Illinois, a Chicago suburb. In the 1970s, the Harvard Crimson ran editorials praising takeover in Cambodia. I went to college in the early 80s, 
an era in which it was not unusual to hear incendiary views on campus. Wait, uh-oh. From communist revolutionaries to the Nobel Prize winning scientist William Shockley, who made crude arguments about the racial inferiority of black people. The Nobel Prize winning scientist William Shockley, who made crude arguments about the raciality of black people. In this century, I recall very few colleges making official statements. You know what's really funny about this? There has never been in the history of the United States of America a moment where the free speech conversation has ever revolved around protecting fucking leftist speech. I'm sorry. When it comes down to it, when organizations act, they almost always right wing uh, and, and even Nazi ideology. But when it comes down to when it comes down to like communism, dude. Is something that happened in this country. It is technically, and I didn't even know this myself, illegal to be a communist in the United States of America. I did not even know that. The idea that, like, the idea that, that huh, the idea that sentiment, socialism, communism, is integration. There it is. Communist control of 1954. Is an American law signed by President Dwight Eisenhower finds evidence to be considered by jury in determining participation in the activities, planning, objections, and purposes of such organizations. I did not realize that this fucking law is still, it's a thing. I also didn't know that it was a question on the citizenship. They associated student groups that advocated for civil rights and pro communist that were deemed communist. They associated student groups that advocated for civil rights as pro-communists and allowed the government to dismantle certain student groups. Uh, not a fan of Zikaria by any means, but wasn't that newspaper clipping just him taking a side on the purpose of a debate club? Not necessarily personal views. I think, I think uh, you know, I mean, he, he was definitely free. Uh, I don't know if he was like, he didn't want BDS to exist on college campus, but he was willing to, I guess, advocate for against it, which you're right. I mean, that does mean to be a free speech, Andy. Statements about the Iraq war or even the attacks of 9-11 now in a different world in recent years the pressure on universities to take political positions has grown a turning point might have been the murder of George Floyd, George Floyd. when many institutions decided to desensitivity and issue did you see Norm Finkelstein might uh, won't condemn Hamas why am I waiting my time doing that then um, I think he wrote a piece on it. I mean, I've listened to him talk about this specifically about how he compares it to Nat Turner and now James Ball and W.B. Dubois uh, and, and many other thinkers that he cares about deeply uh, openly talked about how they would never condemn Nat Turner while they would condemn the violence. They would never condemn any kind of like uh, slave uh, revolt or slave rebellion because they under to, to go about it. I, on the other hand, of course, uh, am in a in a different predicament. I'm not. I'm not like a like a formative, important uh, Jew scholar and activist uh, that has been around for many many years. I am a uh, Muslim, white passing, uh, Turkish American Twitch streamer. I'm not gonna be running around like no, I fucking uh, Turkish American Twitch streamer. Okay. Not gonna be running around being like, no, I fucking don't condemn Hamas. There's no conversation. You don't do that. Yeah, you're out of your fucking mind. And I do condemn the vote. You know, it's not, it's not like a like a. It's. I mean, I guys, I said what I said on October seventh or October eighth. Like it was pretty odd from day one. I've said exactly the same things that the Haaretz editorial board said. Exactly the same things that many other thinkers said. That like. These actions are, are gross. They're violent. They're hard. However, those actions are not born out of nowhere. They're not born out of uh, fucking, uh, you know, the, the Hamas being evil and, and operating on the basis of like evil and, 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 and anti-Semitism and hating a Jewish general. Like, that's not, like, of course there are anti-Semites in Hamas and certainly there's plenty of... Uh, anti-Semitic people in the anti-Zionist movement as well. But the idea that, like, this violent action is, like, a, a cartoonish villain uh, move and not born out of the the violence of, of living in a fucking... Brother, you say that often, but I don't... Vacuum. October 7th did not happen in a fucking vacuum. It was not an unprovoked act of violence. If you say that, you're literally a delusional 
fucking completely wrong person. I don't know what else to say. You're just wrong. Anyway, um, yeah. My point is, my point is, uh, uh, free speech only goes in one direction and never the other. Issue statements. Once they took a stand on one political issue, it's perfectly understandable that they have been also asked to condemn Hamas's attack last month. But where will it end? A Pandora's box has been opened. With every major political event, university administrators will have to decide whether to condemn or support it. Will they find some standard by which they can explain why they denounced one terrorist attack or human rights abuse, but not another? I'm not sure what it signifies that many of us find the embrace of free speech outlined in the Calvin Report to be too cold in its neutrality. We want our institutions to endorse our own passions and points of view. But can they do that in a diverse society in which people disagree so strongly on so much? I fear that far from bringing us together, the path we are on will drive us further apart. Republican Senator Tim Scott dropping out of the race for president. He made the announcement. Guys, bad news. Tim Scott and I are in a relationship and I told him he can't can't run for president any longer. Okay. Good news. I took his virginity. Bad news. He's no longer running for president. Let's take a look. During a live TV interview, we're told it caught many of his own staff members and donors by surprise. It also very clearly caught the. He literally fucking sent a campaign donation blast. I think 13 minutes before he revealed on television that he was no longer running. That's pretty cool. The TV host off guard. The TV host who is his longtime friend and former South Carolina congressman, Dre Gowdy. Bro, who amongst us hasn't started acting different? Who amongst us hasn't started acting different once they get a little bit of pussy, like a crumb of pussy, okay? Everybody's got that one friend who no longer comes around when they get a girlfriend, okay? That's Tim Scott. Oh, yeah, here it is. This is the funniest fucking email. New York Times breaking news. Tim Scott suspends 2024 presidential campaign. Team Tim Scott, one last chance. When I go back to a presidential a candidate, I am suspending my campaign. I, I think the voters uh, who are the most remarkable people on the planet have been really clear that they're telling me uh, not now, Tim. I don't think they're saying Trey no, but I do think they're saying not now. Here's a look at the GOP field as it stands. Scott suspending his campaign just two months before the Iowa caucuses. Sources close to his campaign tell CNN his team was worried about if he would qualify for the debate next month, and that is leaving the race, and that leaving the race now allows him to return to the Senate without an embarrassing finish in Iowa. Let's bring in Eva McKend, who has been following all of this. Well, you know this so closely. I'm not sure if you were surprised, but the fact that Trey Gowdy was surprised uh, on that live on-air announcement says a lot, doesn't it? It does, Poppy and Phil. You know, good morning to you. I was watching this back this morning, and it really seemed like no doubt that this was a, de a decision that was informed by his faith. The timing was a surprise, but not the announcement itself. That's because there were several warning signs. Uh, but most of the people in his campaign had been telling me that they were going to press on until Iowa. But uh, you are right. They were worried about qualifying for the fourth Republican debate next month. He was the last candidate to meet the donor and polling thresholds to make last week's debate. And he clearly wants to uh, pursue perhaps another run again, he really indicated in that interview. And it seems as though by leaving now, he is best positioned uh, to do so, uh, was his reasoning. But don't expect him to endorse anyone else in the field quite yet. Uh, it didn't seem like he is going to, for instance, endorse Nikki Haley like some of his fundraisers have overnight. Uh, he says he thinks it's best for him to keep quiet. Let's listen. I'm going to recommend that the voters uh, study each candidate and their candidacies and, and frankly, their, their past and make the best decision for the future of the country. The best way for me to be helpful is to not weigh in on who they should endorse. So Scott really centered his campaign on hope and optimism, but evidently that was not a message that Republican voters had an appetite for at this time. Phil, nope. Poppy? Nor one that Trey Gowdy was expecting. <laughs> Even McCann, we appreciate it. Thank you. We have breaking news that answers a big question. Did Donald Trump have an advanced motive to stage a coup? Did he plan to try to steal the election and stay in the office no matter what? Well, according to secret coup video, C2 Trump aides flip on Trump, Trump and Rigo Sessions in Georgia. Um, Donald Trump calls political opponents vermin. Oh, my fucking goat. 
Dude, Donald Trump has been popping off about Israel Palestine as well. He had like a couple takes that I saw that were so good. He's like, I mean, they were just like so funny. What did he fucking say? What the fuck did he? He said something like, Israel's got to dial it back a little or something like that. <laughs> or no, he said something about like PR. He's like, Hamas, he's, they got great PR, folks. Israel, not so much. He was like, let it, let it play out. Uh, you got to see the political article about Brandon. The suggestion for Biden to save his campaign from the new political article. Make active efforts to make Liz Cheney a big part of his campaign. Bring in Rahm Emanuel as a campaign manager and appoint Bill and Hillary Clinton as envoys for Israel-Palestine. Are you fucking kidding me? The absolute worst people that you could put on this situation. Uh, Norman Finkelstein on smoke. Uh, I'm working on bringing Norm on the show, by the way. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have the goat on the. Sh this was one of them. This was one of the takes he had. He said, "Justin, Donald Trump says there's no hatred like the Palestinian hatred of Israel and Jewish people, and probably the other way around also. I do not know." Before adding that, sometimes you have to let things play out and you have to see where it ends. <laughs> it's so he's so stupid, dude. Ha! Huh, hilarious. And you guys are about to reelect this fuck. Yeah, dude, we are. I'm I'm campaigning for Donald Trump, as you guys know. I, I love him, and I think he's the best president of all time. And certainly, I'm stupid and think that, you know, his his opinions are, are uh, not... His his administration wasn't, like, the accelerant, uh, the, the Israel-Palestine situation. Anyway. All right, guys. I'm going to... I'm going to fucking... I'm going to end it on a short... On a short one today. I've been up doing photo shoots all fucking day. I'm tired. I, I know I said I was going to do more variety news today, and I didn't actually end up doing more variety news today. Uh, but uh, obviously there was a time limitation here. Half day, I know. Started at 12. Literally been fucking doing photos uh, since 8 in the morning. So unfortunately, that's what I got for today. However... However, tomorrow is another day, and, and tomorrow we will do variety news and variety streaming. Okay, we're back. We're doing more variety, I promise. Promise. Love you all, and peace in the Middle East, okay? Peace. Her son is streaming, her son is streaming, reviewing the field, Uncle Uger's face, sad and discord at prop, great names take on break, tiny Bernie Sanders, LGBTQR force, the whole left at your fingertips, on a at your door H3 crowded up babe the young turks online show three full fucking years of this plenty more to go every day fiance talk some champagne bourgeoisie trump rally live reaction on mass riot at dc her son is streaming, son is streaming, stream. yeah, her son is streaming, her son is streaming, reading a live stream fans, Austin show jazz advice, and all the ways the right wing five, I can suck you in my JCS React Lord frame is broken, cover blown. A full blown mess pandemic monster streaming at your total realization coming out of the system you were taught to trust in was broken the whole time. And all these daily streams. Whether big or whether small, have helped me and so many. Fights.